What's up, everybody? It's the Smoking Tire Podcast. Uh, this episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast brought to you by one of my favorites, Omaha Steaks. You got Father's Day coming up, and uh, unless your father happens to be a vegan, unless your dad's like, the new post heart attack Kevin Smith. He'll probably love meats from Omaha Steaks. If I was your dad, I'd like meats from Omaha Steaks. And I know because they sent me a box to try, and there's like so many things in this box, and uh, for a ridiculous price. Check me out. I swear to God, this is gonna be awesome. Omaha Steaks. They'll deliver you the hand trimmed, hand frozen, vacuum sealed meats directly to your door in an Omaha Steaks cooler with some dry ice. You're gonna get a bunch of different variety options in there. Highest quality cuts with a -a one-of-a-kind flavor. It's all USDA inspected for quality and aged for 21 days to unlock the full flavor and tenderness of the cuts. But here we go. Check this out. In the box, you get two tender filet mignons, two beefy top sirloins, four chicken fried steaks, two boneless pork chops, four all beef Omaha steak burgers, four gourmet jumbo franks, 12 ounces of all beef meatballs, a pound of steakhouse fries, four caramel apple tartlets, those are ridiculous by the way, one Omaha steak seasoning packet, and four more grill met ready, grill ready, Omaha Steak Burgers, free with purchase. You know what I did with those burgers? I actually made rice bowls out of them. I chopped them up and made rice bowls. It was good. Get this limited package, right? Limited time only, $49.99. All of that stuff I just told you, $49.99. Go to omahasteaks.com and type tire in the search bar and add the Father's Day gift package to your cart, all right? You follow me on that one? omahasteaks.com, then type tire in the search bar and then add the Father's Day gift package to your car. Even to your car. Even if you're not a dad, you're not gonna be a dad, don't even have a dad, this is a great deal no matter what. Okay? OmahaSteaks.com. Type tire in the search bar and then add the Father's Day package to your cart. It's gonna be delicious. We're also brought to you by AutoTempest.com. It's your one stop shop. Literally, instead of having to go to all these different uh, websites, cars.com, cars direct, car soup, whatever, eBay Motors. Instead of having to do all that work, I hate double work. Go to autotempest.com and search all those places, plus Auto Trader and all of Craigslist, like national Craigslist, for one click. Boom, done. It's all, all, all the place in one. And uh, Auto Tempest has been with us a while. We love them very much. And when I'm either, if I'm looking for a specific car, or as I'm sure many of you do, just browsing around, autotempest.com saves you time. It saves you time, it saves you energy, it gets it all done in one place, autotempest.com. Um, lastly, stay tuned at the end of this episode for our segment uh, featuring the Haggerty.com newsletter, Collector's Car Corner. Whatever you'd like to call it. I like Collector's Car Corner. I think that works. Uh, Haggerty.com slash newsletter, whether it's uh, their magazine, their uh, articles on collecting cars, or, of course, Haggerty Insurance. They've got it all over there. This week on the show, we got a real good episode for you. Our old pal Tanner Faust is in the studio. A drifter, rally car driver, television presenter, stunt driver. He has done it all. The man has lived a thousand lives in one lifetime. It's unbelievable. And as a bonus, we got Scott Eastwood in studio, the star of Fate of the Furious. Uh, he hosts his own podcast as well. He records it in our studio. So it's good to have him on our show. The man is uh, just sort of getting into cars, but in a heavy-hitting way, and uh, he's a real interesting guy. We're glad to have him. Tanner Faust and Scott Eastwood, it's the Smoking Tire Podcast. Smoking Tire Podcast. That's... That's Tanner going home today. I'm just kidding. That was <laughs> fucking good. horrible. I'm you know, just kidding. That's here's the, worst here's the thing about being a pilot, <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, right? Yeah. The thing the about aviator. flying planes is you literally watch every single crash video there is. Mm-hmm. Like all the NTSB breakdowns of, oh, their emotional status was like this, just broke up with his girlfriend, then got in some clouds and died. Like they, <laughs> they literally go through every, and they go through every part of it. Like they're amazing when they break down those crashes. Yeah. And as a pilot, you watch every single one. I'll tell you what they do don't teach you though i was in uh panama probably a month ago so every good story starts <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i decided to charter uh, a, a little cessna uh, across uh, the country because i was trying to get uh to 
an, a group of islands called Bocas del Toro, and it's on the Caribbean side, and I had to go from the Pacific side to the Caribbean side. So I was like, fuck driving, let's get a plane. Yeah. So called, got the plane, uh, the plane looked in good shape, yada yada. <laughs> they usually do. <laughs> <laughs> had a nice paint job on it. Jeez. And I don't know any everything about, you know, <laughs> Cessnas, because I'm, I'm a helicopter pilot. How so many like, shit boxes have great paint? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. great paint. I was like, oh, it's got to be new. Compared it's to the cars there, though, I think that's a fair way to judge something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so we get to the airport, and first off, the pilot looked not a day over 21, and I was like, how old are you? Uh, and he was like, I'm 24. I was like, oh, okay. But, I'm, you know, you got a, a lot of hours, right? And he's like, yeah, I got a, you know, a few thousand hours. Yeah. Uh, okay. I was like, ah, okay, that's you know pretty decent. Right. And then I asked how old the plane was, and it was sixty <laughs> years old. Oh. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, single engine going over the mountains to the Caribbean side. Oh, that's a little sketchy. And then my worst fear came true. We took off, climbed to about six thousand feet, and the pilot started freaking out and told me that there was a problem with the plane and we had to turn back. <sighs> Like, wait, wait, wait. Nope. wait. So, um, nope. so you're sitting in the front at this point? Yeah, I'm sitting in the you're front. You're in the front just in case, yep. right? My buddy's and, in the back. Yeah. Oh, and, my God. And, and could you tell he was stressed out before he found the yes, issue? Yes, very stressed. Uh, kept flipping the fuel switch over. Oh, shit. Um, the auxiliary <laughs> tank. And I'm like, oh, first off, I knew something was wrong because I'm like, you just don't do that. And I'm like, okay, why is he doing that? And I and I asked him, and he didn't speak the greatest English. So, <laughs> and you didn't speak the greatest. And Spanish. I didn't speak the greatest <laughs> Spanish. Uh, I said, you know, is, is everything okay? And then he didn't answer me, which really <laughs> concerned me. It's like you, oh my god, yeah. uh, is everything okay? How many engines on the, were there on the plane? One. 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 <laughs> I'll answer that. So, uh, was the problem that he didn't put fuel in it? Uh, he didn't know uh, what the problem was, oh my uh, God. and he just he knew there was something wrong, which was you know good because look he was taking every, every precaution. He knew something was wrong, um, but we landed in a hurry, <laughs> and it was not fun. Descending from you know six seven thousand feet uh, in a hurry, he did what's you know you know what a slip yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, a slip is where you you know you turn the plane sideways more or less, and you lose you bleed off altitude very quickly um, to gain speed. Right now to, to to lose altitude without gaining speed. Oh, yeah. okay. So he entered you know an emergency landing pretty much. He he got down real quick uh, and you know landed and, and luckily we were okay. But Did he land it was where terrifying. he was supposed to land. Yeah, yeah. We he didn't got, land we in like a field or something. Right? No, no. We made it back to. <laughs> To the runway, but it was it was very scary. Enterprise, we'll pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> but and then he and then he tried to tell me after he's like, well, no, just wait, you, wait, we'll get the guy and you know the mechanic will come. And I said, no, no, yeah, no, 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 we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. this About point. 18 minutes ago, I realized what a dumbass I was for <laughs> signing up for this. Yeah. Yeah. You don't yeah. get second chances with aircraft. If you blow your first chance with an aircraft, you can't expect someone to give you another one. No. No. And I got to tell you, Scott, we've done that drive. It's not that far, and it's, it's probably true. the only decent paved road in the entire country. <laughs> oh, from from, uh, from Cologne from, to Panama City. Yes, I was. We were on a school bus that was <laughs> that no was way. a little modified. Was that more dangerous than a plane? That was, was way more dangerous. Probably. Was, we did 170 kilometers an hour on a school bus Jesus. on that highway. A racing school a, bus. A racing school bus. For real, this is it real. had a bigger turbo. It had intercooler piping that was made of PVC. Yeah, legit. And the, so oh, have, you, have you ever been to Panama? No. So up, think up. I think they've changed this to now have like a legit municipal bus system. But back then they didn't. They had uh, Diablos Rojos, which are privately owned school buses that are then reconfigured to attract uh, customers. So they all have. They all look like this. They all look like this. They all look. They're crazy decorated. It looks like, like crazy a paint. Oh, wow. shit. Like, like a jeepney kind of in. Yeah. The, it's like four, forty thousand yeah. uh, watt stereos in them, oh, and yeah. to announce they're coming. Like, hey, your bus is here, <laughs> and these guys ra they race them at night on the highway. Diablo Rojo. Legit <laughs> Coming 170 your way. kilometers an hour in that. Door in open. School bus with the door open. That's sketchy. The tires had huge, they were like, like they put retreads, like they would glue them back on when they come <laughs> off and there were just holes. It's fucking scary. I don't know, the plane seems like, 
This one's a, I think this it's one's a, a Bieber bus. It's a wash. I think it's a wash in sketchiness, honestly. <laughs> I mean, we didn't have to do an emergency pullover. We we survived. We did. Yeah. That's why planes make me nervous. Shady. I mean, aren't, aren't a lot of the whatever like the body of the plane's pretty old they just change out the engines and stuff like aaron robinson's plane i think is like maintain, four years yeah, old you maintain it well right it's what it's what it's all about is the maintenance <laughs> like but even yeah. so a plane that is uh with with the kind of plane that i've got it's a bonanza it's the exact same body that you could have bought in the 50s um like the every placement of every rivet is basically the same yeah it's just the other electronics and everything like that's all been updated are the are the powertrains updated as well uh, they're not that much. <laughs> not You'd that be surprised. Much. Yeah, like it's not. What it's not uncommon it? for F thirty three A it to be, a, you know, the exact same. You know, everything except, you know, a, oh, a that's new a overhaul nice plane. on an engine. Look at that. That's right? a great little plane. So the yeah. it's you know it, they they're fuel injected. That's that's, that's, good. that's about it. But they have mags. Does it have air conditioning? No, it doesn't. Does it get real hot when you fly it? Um, you just go higher. Oh, does that solve that? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's three degrees every thousand feet or something like that. Hmm. But it's, uh, you know, I've got a little cooler box that'll blow some cold air in there, but it's not air conditioned. And it's not turbo, so as you go higher, you know, you lose some power. Uh-huh. But it goes 200 miles an hour. It gets 14 miles to the gallon. That's pretty good. And, uh, Very good. It's, and you, it, fl- you flew here from John Wayne to Hawthorne, which is like seven-eighths of the way. Uh, Pretty much. <laughs> well, from so John Wayne to yeah, Santa Monica, it, it's like twelve minutes, but it's a um, it, there's a there's a range, <laughs> all right. Th- What's the optimum? Where do you? Where is it the most convenient? It's like a hundred miles to seven hundred miles. Okay, like that. If it's further than that, you might as well. Fly. It depends also where the little runway is, because sometimes there's a little runway really close. We we uh, test the VWs out in in uh, Phoenix. And there's a hotel right off the end of the runway of this little neighborhood that everybody has a big garage with an airplane in their garage. Whoa. And their own runway. Oh, and cool. You can land there. It's five bucks a night. Hell yeah. You just park the plane, rollerboard right into the hotel. So it like makes it more convenient than flying. Totally, to yeah. Wouldn't it have been faster to fly to Hawthorne? I fly to Hawthorne a lot from, from San Diego. I thought about that. This uh, Santa, Santa Monica Santa has Santa. this nice This is the most L.A. conversation <laughs> ever. <laughs> I thought I'd take the 405 to the 91. Hold the now. <laughs> Stop it. When white people Stop in L.A. It. This is what do you, the most what do you fly, LA. Scott? Real, this is a real you problem. You fly also, man. Scott? Yeah. I'm oh, gonna, you do? I fly do helicopters. Fly? Holy shit. So we can yeah. just go pretty much. Well, I've learned you can't go everywhere. You can't go anywhere. You you have to get permission. You know, it, look, you can land anywhere uh, if your neighbor complains right. or someone complains and, you know, you could be in... Is that yeah, a legit complaint? I'm, I'm rich white guy, Beverly Hills, and my neighbor lands his helicopter, and I call the cops. Go, this fucking asshole's landing a helicopter. Is that actually grounds for the police to do something, or is that okay? It's not. It, it would be an FAA thing uh-huh. with your license. Um, I don't know if the police would get involved, right? Uh, you but know, it's more it like criminal. a hey, man, don't be, don't do that anymore. Yeah, I, I mean, you. It depends. Okay. It just depends, right? If they if they call one time and they didn't really know your tail number or whatever, or they like open an investigation. You know, if it's a over, you know happens yeah. over and over again, <laughs> how how much of a problem are you? Yeah. Have but you ever gotten like an FAA issue? No, I Have try you? not to. No. Tanner, have you been a bad boy? No, never. No, 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 no. Is it it's really bad if it's you serious. get one? I don't know. No, I mean, I mean, if you get one, you that might be the end of your license. That's a problem. It depends, you know. Yeah. They might just call you and say, "What was this? Why did you do this?" Uh-huh. But you just don't want to. You don't want to. Yeah, because investigation doesn't mean conviction. <laughs> 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 Remember the uh, the guy you might have you might have ever at worked with him at one point. Remember the stunt helicopter pilot before drones, two thousand nine ten. Okay. When you still had to hire a real helicopter, there was a guy who did worked for a lot of car shit and a lot of TV shit, and he did a thing with. I don't want to say who the company was, but it was porn. And a porno chick gave him head while he was flying his helicopter. And oh, yeah. that was the video. Oh, yeah. They yoinked the fuck out of his license. Oh, that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that is sucks. apparently not good. Just popped his license? That, wow. Yeah, he's never <laughs> yeah. flown never flown again. Threw away think. a whole career just for that. That's, oh, but that man. video, though, I mean. <laughs> I'm sure he's got a before without it, video. I know? mean, is Roadhead that great? Anyway. Very no. Good point. Yeah. No. And helicop- like, helicopters aren't that comfortable. Well, <laughs> wait a sec. Wait a sec. I know that might help, You guys actually. skipped over Roadhead pretty quick there. That's, <laughs> not, uh, that's a pretty good novelty. It's, a novelty. it's been a lot of years. Uh, your, a your, focus factor, your focus is drawn. Your focus is drawn. It's a great novelty in high school. At 36. Let's say you're making 500K a year as a pilot, and someone goes, <laughs> Is this blowjob worth $500,000? Times, no. times 20. Times definitely not. not. 
I, I, let's just let's just say you know it's it's still it's still a still roadhead is a novelty. It's true. Yes, I'm not saying it's worth. He's losing very pragmatic. He, you know, <laughs> listen, you don't turn down. <laughs> you do not. But you, you might turn it down to hell. You also don't say, you know what? Roll camera. I, I got the <laughs> yeah. weekend free. Why yeah, not? I mean, but is it? Can you enjoy it with a producer, a sound guy, <laughs> with a boom? That yeah, booms in my face. And yeah. you've got a collective <laughs> to work with. Oh, you yeah. know, did I you go a, from planes to helicopters? I did. Well, I never got my fixed wing a license, but I, I did. I was on my path to doing it, and I what sort made of got, you go jump the ship. I got busy, and I got you know I got busy with work, and then. I came back to it, and I, I had a flown as a kid a little bit with my father. He, uh, he's a helicopter pilot as well, and I really liked that. And so I just started picking it up again, and I was like, ah, I kind of like this better. Okay. And then totally fair. Yeah. You tried choppers, Tanner? Um, I've never flown one now, but there's a you know I think it's very similar training the first half. Oh, definitely. So you probably didn't lose anything going. No. Like it, it, I think it, you know, a lot of it's really similar to the last. Half of it. I've been in a couple of helicopters, but I, I kind of had a little bit of a bad experience in a, really? in a smaller one that was uh, just at altitude, and it was a really small helicopter. But um, you know, whenever I've been in a big one, like a camera helicopter, like the one your friend got the blowjob in, <laughs> that uh, those I mean, like those are amazing. He machines. wasn't my friend. <laughs> what, a, <laughs> what a great this is your brother. Your I thought no, it was. No, yeah. It was. It was me. It was. Me. This is a big. <laughs> it was me. Yeah. You didn't know me before. Oh wait, it was me. <laughs> wait, what happened with the bad experience? So at altitude, yeah. what exactly happened? Did he hit the? Did he was was he freaked out? Did she he used teeth. Uh, it just was. He just gotten the license. Just gotten the helicopter. Just everything was so much more brand new. Then I, then I realized um, the plane was really close to a hangar, and just the way the air was coming off the hangar when we we're just, just the feeling of hovering in this little thing, which was smaller than this table. And Is it I one mean, of them little tiny like bubble things? It was a two seater. It wasn't like the mash one, but it was an R twenty two. It's like I think about the same size, but. It just was like so much more vibration. Like if I had a helicopter, it's a big spinning fan. Like if I have a fan that's out of sync and is like shaking, you fix it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's a freaking helicopter and it's vibrating all over the place. Like you can barely hold onto the seat. And no, the twenty twos are are pretty. They're they're pretty. I actually got my formal training and then I transitioned into a forty four. I'll never go back to flying a twenty two. That doesn't like, even you, sound fun. Can like, you that's sound scary. scary. Stick some gum Scott, on the blades that aren't like that are on the lights. I, I did the the Vegas Canyon yeah. tour, the Grand Robinson. Canyon tour, and it still was wiggling around like yeah. way more than I expected. That was my first helicopter experience, and I thought I was really attracted to the whole like you can land and take off anywhere and strafe and stuff. And then when I rode in that, I was like, this is really uncomfortable. Okay, Until that's what you fly. Something. That's a forty four. That's a forty four. Which I would never get anything smaller than that. That's an absolute minimum. But that's a different story. Those are that's a decent size chopper. It's decent size. They're still a piston helicopter. They still really have no storage. Uh they don't fly as good. Uh it's a it's a low rotor RPM system, so it's it's not, you know, flying in a in a turbine feels a lot better. Um I know what you guys are saying. And yeah. it does it does feel better. No, I yeah. completely understand. Turbine yeah. is the smoothest engine that there is. Yeah. So that you you go from a piston. How many pistons are it? Like is it? It's not. How many cylinder engine is that? There's a four cylinder engine. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Tim just keeps distracting me with pictures of your fucking GT. <laughs> Scott, he wants us to talk about cars again. Is that what you're saying? Go to cars. Oh, we uh, go. Yeah. Helicopters that's, are that's cool. Now cover. we can just be jealous. We can go. <laughs> Because Scott got a GT. <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> is that the color? A lot of people hate me, actually. That's the, the color, color, the gurney the gurney color? The gurney. Tanner, yeah. how much do you hate him? Yeah, I've never driven one. You haven't? No. They're, I love these. I've driven a, a 65, and then- The original. You know, Sorry, yeah. That's pretty good. And then the- uh, That was cool. Um, and then, what was the other one? 95, 96, oh, those 406. years? Oh, 406. Oh, 406. Yeah, yeah. Those are great. Um, yeah, those were good. Actually, the fastest I'd ever been in a car was in one of those until like just a couple of years ago. Oh, no, really? Is. Yeah, at the Standing Mile in Texas. Like a modified so, one? Yeah, it was a twin turbo. And so what, what, what'd you hit? It was 223 and a Standing Mile. Oh, How'd it feel? Wow. Stable? Yeah, rock solid. Really? Those cars run yeah. like they were, you know, the ones that like have the records that do like 282, 283. They run stock aero. They, they run mirrors. They don't even take that I shit think off. They just don't make downforce. You know, they, they don't, but they're really yeah. stable in a straight line. Yeah. yeah. They weren't very good racing. So they don't cars, lift either. Big wings. I mean, yeah. my, mine goes stock, I think, 220 without anything yeah. done to it, right? Yeah. 220 or 217, 217 is the quoted number, but I don't see it having any problem with that whatsoever. That car is really, really fast and very, very stable too. Mm. It's so pretty. 
That is. It is. Super I was giving him shit last week though, because the, the the debate is right. You own one. You've got an investment. You know how 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 made of money are you versus what they'll be worth? It's such a limited commodity in whatever the agreement length is. Was it two years? Two years. Yeah, you can't sell it for two years, right? Otherwise, Ford sues you, right, John Cena? But I don't want to sell it. I don't even want to sell it in two years. I want to keep it. I think it's an an awesome. Right, but I think you should drive I'm gonna it a drive lot. It. I'm going to drive it a lot. Have you I'm thought about it. this since no, we I spoke, have. Scott? I have. What's I'm going to drive it. What is a lot? What is a lot? You what know? is a lot when, you ha- when you, there are only 500 of the cars, if you keep it clean and you don't crash it, it doesn't matter how much you drive it, I think. What do you think? I think you drive it. I think you, you've got it because you, yeah. you, you love the way it looked and the, the way that it feels and the way that it drives. And, I mean, yeah, I would be driving it quite a bit. Yeah. But I think you can drive it a says lot. Says the people that don't own one that don't give a fuck. Dude, I, yeah, yeah, you didn't drive that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drive it. Put some miles on it. <laughs> <laughs> I put. I I use my the most expensive shit I own. I use. I don't know. Yeah. I I don't have that kind of money, but if I did, I would love to drive a car like I that. I mean, around. I'm with you. You have to you drive can, it. You can't just, just let it sit. Just based on what I know from people who have the O4s, they drive it. You know, from 04 to now, I know guys with 25, 30,000 miles in the car, right? So what's that? 2,500 miles a year? That's like some. That's driving it some. Right. And their cars are worth 80% more than they paid for them 10 years later, and they've enjoyed them for 30,000 miles. 100%. Um, so what is the, the is Jay Leno's McLaren worth? Oh, my God. And how many miles does he have on so it? So many and so much, dude. He's driven that Ooh. car a shitload, and he paid eight hundred grand for it in 98, which was completely unheard of at the time, and the car's worth $15 million. And like Rowan Atkinson, cra- he drove his a lot, <laughs> crashed, crashed it, it, got it, it put back together, and it's still it worth way more than MSRP. So what do you think? I mean, could the GT be MSRP. worth that kind of money someday? Yeah, if you don't total it, yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah, and plus your name 15 is fifteen million. Yeah, could it be worth fifteen million? I don't know. It's, they're not McLaren F ones. Right. They don't sit in the middle. Right. They only made sixty four road going F ones. So yeah. Well, the McLaren but, set the bar, and the G, this GT is kind of following its footsteps a little bit. Even though they made one in sixty five, so it was like a race car. But five hundred is not a lot. Five hundred Enzos. No. 500 F like there's not a lot of cars with less than 500 and it's also it's not a, not a cheap even, they're not like, even at 500 they're like behind in their production too they'll make all 500 but so? it's yeah, yeah yeah but it's um they're they'll be worth money but it's like they'll be the museum pieces will be worth a lot but those people have to stare at their cars and not drive them no That's I'm gonna sad. drive it just drive it how long did you wait for it uh well we've waited over a year and a half we okay. since we since I applied and and got uh, accepted um but yeah it's been wait the production was I think we were supposed to get it last year did you have to write an essay or something <laughs> yeah the, oh my god it was, going a very, it was a very lengthy really? application process yeah the level yeah. of groveling to it get was, I grovel really I begged borrowed stole <laughs> I will do anything to get this car having uh, driven one I completely what. Did you give road hit? You're offering, <laughs> and a helicopter. You're offering <laughs> helicopter. This is amazing. <laughs> here's a problem with road head. Okay, there was a. Uh, <laughs> there's a problem with it. <laughs> here's, 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 here's what, what is the problem with it? Personal issue, probably. Okay. The uh, Honda CRX. First time I got road head, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, it was ru- it was in Virginia. I was in high school, and it was right when there was I, I just moved there from Napa, California. And there was some sort of blossoming weed there. They called skunk weed, not the kind of skunk weed you're thinking, but it was something, something different. Anyway, uh, hey, we pulled over to the side of the highway. It was great and everything like that. But my car started smelling a little bit weird, a little funky. Had Almost a little funk. skunky. Which yeah, is- <laughs> it had just a, a little scent of semen to it. Oh, wow. And- <laughs> And so I started <laughs> when I sat down. This, this, still, when, I, when I got here at noon, let's talk about topics I didn't think we'd cross. <laughs> what <laughs> your <laughs> semen <laughs> smells like? I shampooed the shit out of this thing, right? Yeah. I and I worked at a golf course, so I was like cleaning golf carts, and so I had all the cleaning materials there. <laughs> You're like, Next I know day, how to clean semen because <laughs> golf carts. Yeah. <laughs> See, that is a good, probably better place for Roadhead. But next day, uh, same. Cleaned it again three times before somebody explained to me there was this plant blossoming that smelled like sperm. That's so <laughs> funny. Yeah. And it, it had also scarred me. Like I, like, my I car. made a mistake, you know, for three days. I was like, man, I can't take anybody that in my car. Is well, it, it also sounds like you didn't have a, a swallower. 
This was high school. <laughs> <laughs> it hadn't gone to class yet. You know, there's like school. If he had a BMW high in the 3 90s. series in high school, it would have been a different situation. Yeah. Ah, I <laughs> see. I see. It, it wasn't even the SI. It was like the, the DX. HF, the HF. No, it wasn't the HF. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Tanner. Yeah. Anyway. We learned about biology today and plants. <laughs> and who's the person that put those two smells together, by the way? They're like a botanist. Like, you know what this smells like? <laughs> he could save this Submitting smell. this like science journal. I'm like, I got to tell you guys, I just discovered. <laughs> That's very funny. Um, where do you go from, where do you even go from there? I don't know. It goes off a cliff. Uh, pine, I, with the yeah, smell I think we're done now. <laughs> that, that's a podcast. Thanks, yeah, guys. It's a whole don't show. <laughs> we know it's got a real low center console is the Acura NSX. I'll tell you what's good for the <laughs> Roadhead. It's a 4GT. The seats are very close together. There's no center console. It's true. Mm -hmm. Very well, easy. you know, it, adjustable it, steering wheel. You push it way far away. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, the, the problem is, like you were saying, that the proximity, uh, Bench seats, you know, like the old yeah. trucks, like a bench seat truck. Yeah. That's better. You, you can go. still get, I think, full size American trucks with bench seats. Yeah. And I think the Toyota Avalon mm -hmm. was the last passenger car that offered a bench seat. Last roadhead car. I got an That's uncle giant. with bad hips. He swears <laughs> by him. Uh, boy. What else? Tanner Faust. What have you been driving? Been racing? Uh, no. Not really. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> He's Same retired. Now. Yeah. Uh, well, on no, the I other show we just finished recording, Scott's uh, uh, unnamed <laughs> show, we, you, you mentioned you bought your old uh, NASCAR Scion, which yes. is great fun. Yes. Have you gotten to drive it or has it just been- No. Because it's an actual NASCAR engine, it's got to basically be rebuilt before it's fired up again. Whoa. Once it's rebuilt, will you need a whole team or can you just bring it to a racetrack someday you by yourself bring and it, play? Um, you got to plug it in for like, a, you know, the tolerances on those NASCAR engines are really tight. Ours was changed a bit, so you don't have to plug it in for an hour, but it needs a warm up for a half hour. It's like they circulate coolant or like warm uh, I don't know what they water, do, right? but they heat things up enough that the tolerance has changed in so the engine. So crazy. So that when you fire it up, it just doesn't seize. I, you know, at the risk, is it worth it for you to have a toy to like just build some motor and stick it in there and put the original engine on a stand that you could probably just turn key a little better? Honestly, it's what we did. That's what the Passat's for. So the Passat has an LS7 in it that is a built, you know, blueprinted motor, mm -hmm. um, nitrous injected, so it's a 900 horsepower. <laughs> and your turnkey turn reliable toy. <laughs> but it's based on <laughs> an LS7, your, which is- a drift taxi, right? It's, a, it's it's getting rear seats as we speak. Awesome. Papadakis is throwing them in there. That's awesome. awesome. Of course yeah. he is. Yeah, so um, I've been doing some off-road stuff, did the Mint 400, and uh, doing stuff with Polaris, and then with uh, Safecraft, doing some of their um, truck racing. But uh, rally cross season doesn't start until what is it? Is it April? May? No, it starts it's later this month. Actually, it's in two weeks. Oh, really? Where does yeah. it start? Uh, Silverstone, England oh, is the first race of the American yeah. series. Cool. Kind of strange. Oh, that's the American series? Yeah. That's not the European series? No. Oh, it's shit. A, a new American series that we can't talk about yet, but it's uh, the first race is in Silverstone, England, and then second race, I think, is in Coda, and you know, then it jumps around. Cool. Yeah. Are they doing... Because, like, Global Rallycross sort of like disappeared kind of abruptly yeah that went away it just sort of sort of didn't really work out or so uh, I don't. you know there was uh, a lot of reasons i guess that's uh you know they've got they're sorting things out the dust is still settling <laughs> money usually is it was yeah. roadhead i think there was a, <laughs> <laughs> it was a problem with roadhead. a little too much roadhead <laughs> yeah it that would really, not be a good place to It was a fun to series to watch. I mean, that, that was a really... Actually, the <laughs> rally cross is like the best spectator sport as far as motorsports go out there. I think it's the reason I got into it. I think it's like, um, you know, you get the, the drag racing start, the crashing, the jumping, sliding around, the races, you can see them from one seat. They yeah. only last like five minutes. So like almost anybody can pay attention for five minutes. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, they're like done in heat formats and stuff. And so the, it's taken off in Europe really well you know it, it it's been around since the 60s yeah but and it and it was really big in the 80s when they were racing like volvo wagons with 800 horsepower and stuff and great. then it went away and then it came back again after about 2011 um 2012 maybe and so now in in europe it's it's going huge so. well it takes the best kind of driving rally driving and it puts it where it needs to be to be a spectator sport because rally is amazing but you can't 
what are you gonna sit on the side of the road for 12 hours to watch six cars go by and that's that I mean they do a great job of covering it on like YouTube and stuff but, oh yeah yeah but, but I know like being saying, there totally. it's just a terrible yeah, spectator, spectator sport, yeah. sport. Um, and, and so Rally Cross puts it in basically a stadium it's awesome yeah See, that's the idea you know you can sit in one seat have a beer watch the whole deal if Watch you're yeah, if you're a spectator over in Europe, how many like races do you see in a day? In well, in two days they do seventy heats. Oh, that's a lot of races Whoa. between Watch. the different classes that they have. That's a bunch. That's a whole uh, day. It's the track's never cold. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's absolutely going crazy, and you know, and it's a small enough sport that it, like I don't know if you've been to an F1 race or even a WRC rally race. You never see the drivers. You never have any interaction with the cars or whatever. It's a small enough sport. You can go there and just watch the mechanics do their thing. Mm -hmm. Drivers are hanging out. Um, no, it's a, it's a good deal. And I think it's it's also an important sport because the cars are based on, like, uh, entry-level cars. Like, we run the Beetle. Ford runs a Fiesta. Subaru runs the STI. And these are um, entry-level cars, so it's a young demographic, and it gets a whole new generation into motorsports, which hopefully makes them want to drive, makes them want to take ownership of their you know, craft. Yeah. Because the cars bit. are more relatable. It's like, it's like GT racing. It's cool to see cars that look like cars, whereas LMP1 or F1, it's like spaceship. Yeah, you go, what, you know? do, you, what do I even do with that? Yeah. I and this is even more relatable. Have you ever thought of racing F1? Is that like a real hard barrier to entry to get in? It's a hard barrier to entry really... It starts, I think, when you're. It's kind of like gymnastics. Yeah. A kid, they you know when you're when ten you're years five. old. Yeah, yeah, um, really. Yeah, yeah. But like he's that, like he's you like a could team do owner it, right? at this point. Tanner. Um, like you could physically compete because you're. Um, I think it'd take a lot of training, and uh, the I've I mean I've got no misconceptions about it. Those guys are feeling what the tire is doing at four Gs, which uh, my teammate <laughs> raced Formula One, uh, Scott Speed, and he Excuse he me. says really, in, he said really only like five guys when he was doing it, he thought really could feel what the tire was doing at four Gs. There were, there's about five people that were always better than everybody else. And I think it's an amazing skill that like you that learn. Point. But so I, I, I don't think anybody's born a race car driver I I think you're born being you know having the aptitude to learn something got it and um, so yeah I could learn it but uh, it's, it's also is it the style of driving it seems like and correct me if I'm wrong obviously you've done a lot of driving professionally that has slipped to it like rallycross has slipped NASCAR to a point drifting of course is that something you came naturally into and you enjoy versus grip driving or have you just mixed it up and that's kind of like where you ended up um, I've always enjoyed sliding around. It's kind of, you know, it's like the highlight reel of, of driving for me. It's always like the fun part is a little bit of slide here and there. Yeah. Even when I do a road course race, if there's a little bit of a slide or a hop over a curb or something like curb chaotic. jumping is a good second yeah. to, to slide. Yeah, yeah, that's sort of what feels fun. That's, mm -hmm. you know, everything else is sort of methodical. Totally agree. Yeah. yeah but you're breaking the, the rules a little bit, which I like. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You rely on something, you know, some intrinsic feel or something. But the, uh, it, it, but I've, in the last couple of years, I've had to relearn road racing as our tires in the U.S. went to radial tires. It's a little, it sounds a little nerdy, but it went from bias ply, which is all sliding around, to radial, where they, you couldn't slide at all and be fast. And so I really had to kind of go back to school and relearn it. And in wait, order wait, wait. To get good again. Go back just one second. Who was using bias ply tires in the modern age? Like rally cars? A rally cross uh, around the world is all on bias ply. Really? Yeah. Is that like is, a known thing? They don't yeah. really talk about that, do they? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a great equalizer of cars. <clears throat> like really, you can, you can have one tire be way out of whack. You can be have a flat and hardly lose much time. Wow. Really? Yeah, because the tires are so terrible, basically. But it, it sort of equalizes everything. You know, they're great at accelerating and braking, like a drag tire, mm -hmm. just not at cornering. Oh, that's so interesting. And but that's completely unlike a car, you, a tire you'd use on a rally car in the woods. Correct. Yeah. It's a completely different tire. Yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, yeah. I it's didn't a know slick. this at all. I, I never heard that before. Supply slick, and then so in the states we were running radial tires which have cornering capability, so you have to carry momentum in the corner and, and not slide the car. And so, yeah, I went back to school and uh, essentially and just had to rethink everything, and it worked, and um, got back up to speed there. But now we're going back to bias play again. In America? In America. Oh, so wait, so when you say literally, I went back to school, what does that mean? When Tanner Faust goes back to school um, and learns how to drive, on I did something. some. I went back to go karting days. Uh, I like. I actually went out to Fontana on the go kart track. Um, I focused on the most important part of the turn for me, which is the brake release. Mm -hmm. um, the brake release. The trail release. brake. 
Mm, it's not it's, a trail break in there? The rate of release off the brake is turning into the corner. Okay. With the bias ply, you trail brake more to load the front more so that you're kind of rotated a little into the corner. And with the radial, you're relying on the front tires more, so you release the brake slowly earlier. Hmm. And you do that in go-karts? Go-karts are a good one to do that in because it's cheap to just do a day. Yeah. And um, you can feel everything really easily. And uh, you can just go out with a couple buddies and see uh, the benefit or penalty. Like, so do you, would you go out and put a bias ply tire on a go kart and then put a radio? So, like, I'm just wondering because if how do you, is a rally car or a rally cross car like that similar to a go kart that you can get that takeaway, oh, or yeah. do you just is that just a foundation wow. to work up? No, it's a, the our cars are just they're race cars. I mean, they're laser, and so yeah, it feels just like a go kart. Huh. And, wow. um, and the car has no suspension, right? So you're you're only talking to the tire. In that is that it, like does that help you focus on it versus if you were in like, you know, a track car with slicks or something trying to learn the same principles? You go, oh well, maybe the back end set up too tight or too stiff or something. Mm, you could get it out of that too. It's really just a men- a way of approaching the corner. It's okay. just a different way of approaching the corner. And, um, you know, and it's, uh, and Scott is, came from, uh, you know, Formula One and, and road racing. And so he was great to compare data with. Um, when we'd go to a track, usually I'd be faster on the dirt. He'd be faster on the pavement. We'd look at the data and then try to meet in the middle. Um, so that, yeah, it's just about studying data and nerding out on, mm-hmm. on what is speed, you know, what's fast and what's good time-wise. Just every race car driver in the world has done this. Right. And um, it just was an interesting process at 40 to reinvent every corner, uh, you know, yeah. how I saw every corner. And uh, it was fun. It was a do fun Do you process. use a, an actual coach or do you, reinter- do you just you know how to interpret data yourself so you just hook up a V-Box and can actually know what it means to look at it? Um, I brought a coach to one <clears throat> round. And um, it, it, that in that particular time, it it helped. But um, really, what seemed most beneficial was just going data to data. Yeah, yeah. And the, you know, the the cars are kind of unique, you know, because they're all wheel drive, so much horsepower, um, and so you can't really get a. It's hard to find a coach that really has experience. That all wheel drive thing is kind of weird. Mm-hmm. So it's just going data to data with the engineer and and um, in car videos. Yeah, uh, you know, simple, it seems kind of weird, but that was that was homework was watching in car videos, and uh, and 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 yeah, it, it worked. And, yeah, and that's and that's what I love. That's what we were talking about a little bit earlier is about uh, flying planes too. It's kind of that same thing. You get onto the steep side of the learning curve on something like that, and you just get addicted to every spare minute. You're pulling up a video every spare minute. You're you're studying on the flight rules or whatever. Yeah, nerding out on some stuff, but it's um. <clears throat> Yeah, it's super fun to be on that steep learning curve and and being passionate about something. What do you think those like levels are? Like if you went from enthusiast driver, I've done a few track days, and then you get to like this plateau of like, oh, now I can like slide a bit. Oh, now I can do like a trail break, you know, nose entry. And then like, fuck, how many levels up from that is I can comment on like spring rates? You know, and I can, and I'm, I'm, I need to learn radial tires versus this other kind of tire, and really break that down. It's so far down that rabbit hole. Uh, yeah, when you know you do something for a living, you know you get you spend a lot of time speaking the language, and that's half of it is communicating what you're feeling in a language that the people that are actually working on stuff. Yes, the understand. entire tension of Days of Thunder, by the yeah. way. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> Have you that done is- race cars at all, Scott? What do you mean, done race cars? Have you, have you gotten seat I've, time in race cars? Have you been interested in racing at all? In a, yeah, I've been on the track, actually, in a, in a GT3. Um, uh, I've done, you know, I've been in, you know, some supercars, but, you know, not like, hey, let's go push it to the limit and uh-huh. really do what you do, you know, like take a car to its limit. Yeah, and I think I think the first step for going on the track, I think anybody going on a track with the GT3 or supercar should go straight to a wet skid pad mm-hmm. uh-huh. and should be sideways. Which you can do at the Porsche Experience Center in Carson, Carson actually. Are they a sponsor? No. Nope. <laughs> no. Nope. Yeah, yeah. Not only are they a sponsor, they wanted insurance? me to pay full boat to go on and do a day there. They don't <laughs> need me for to bring nothing. a 4GT there and be like, can I get on the skid pad, please? Yeah, you're going to um, need some Haggerty insurance for that. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, you go. Well, gonna well done. <laughs> Wait till you see my integration at the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you get in a skid Seamless. pad. It's sort of you see, not to be graphic. You get what's under the skirt. How, I'm not like I'm worried about being graphic after this roadhead conversation. <laughs> but you know, you get to see what's behind the scenes first. What's beyond the limit? You know.
know, by sliding around and, and doing that. And then when you get out on the track, there's no like mystery of what happens if it does start to rotate a little bit mm-hmm. more and yeah. you can just fix it. It's, it, oh man, it makes it so I'd much like more fun. That. I'd like to do that. That's down in uh, Carson. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right next to the air, right uh, by the uh, IKEA. They do. Ah, they can see it from the highway. Lovely. They have a whole course called like I don't know, Porsche Grip or something, and it, they have uh, the wet skid pad, and then they have a polished road course, like a shrunken road course with polished concrete. So it's basically like driving on snow, <clears throat> and you can just practice using like a mid, well, mid rear engine car and responding to that. And then uh, the next level at the end of the day, they take you like doing full dry tarmac drifts. So I know it's not a 4GT, but it would just get you maybe get That'd more comfortable. Awesome. Like sliding. it's, yeah, I'm saving so up. Awesome. It looks real good. It's like turbos and GT3s, and you're drifting them by the end of the day. Or sounds fun. in Riverside, there's a slick track go kart track. You know. Oh really? It's, yeah. It's just just uh, one notch down. Really? I mean, you're not in a. What about that? GT3. That's probably yeah. really fun. Oh my god, that'd be great. What's it called? How does I can't remember. Uh-huh. It's uh, there's one. Okay, there's one that is the kart center, which is really close. It's kart world. It's oh, right go next kart to, world. Yeah, <laughs> that's old school, but it's an oval. The slick yeah. track is an oval. It's still fun in a sort of, but a ghetto chaotic Isn't it kind an of amusement way? park kind yeah. of way. Ghetto chaotic is yeah. good. Yeah. The the <laughs> other one, and there's one guy that works anyway. <laughs> I was the thrown other one, out of there once. Yeah. <laughs> For what? I, uh, not being happy with my experience. <laughs> saying something about it. <laughs> Uh, it's the, somewhere in Riverside, but it's actually got like turns and it's a slick track, you know, and they, they throw down like little, I don't know, p- baby powder or something or whatever. Cornstarch. Oh, that's awesome. It's cornstarch corn that makes oh. it slippery. Yeah, yeah, really? That seems yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. It's fun as hell. A slick track's great fun. They The one in Go Car World is actually polished. It's really mm-hmm. slick. It's like impossible to steer on the thing. But really? it's like four horsepower, though, so you need to bring your own oh, hardware. Oh, okay, got it. Um, yeah, get on the track. We didn't get, we didn't get, Cart race happening, maybe Fontana. Yeah, okay, I'm in. Did you, would you do go karts? Yeah, everyone. I've done go karts yeah. before. Yeah, go karts are, are where it's at. It's it's what I found really interesting is because I, I went with uh, some some race car drivers and the the teaching of learning the breaking into the turn and the the apex right like learning how to hit that mm-hmm. makes such a big difference. Mm. I was like, oh, like I could drive like fast and I could. I can handle myself in, in this go-kart course, and I'd probably be pretty good. No. <laughs> yeah, line, line is a big thing. Yeah. Line, line is very important. Thing. When you get, a, and if, which way, if you go to a kart track like an outdoor, you know, you got 60, 70 mile an hour Rotax carts or whatever, and you, it starts to like all click in a go-kart, and it's super easy to get in a kart, and then, you know, you just sit there and talk. Hey, so now this time follow me and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a little different, you know, because I think when people think of go karts, they think of like K one or or um, indoor electric carts suck. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I did. I think. <laughs> no, it's, I mean it's fine for like you know an sure. evening of fun, but yeah. it's you not. You still get something out of it. You like do. You said. Yeah. yeah. But they just they lose power. It's very sad. True. Yeah. You can rent all of Adams Motorsports Park for I think it's five hundred dollars a day. What? Which is an outdoor car track in Riverside, and they have that's carts, true. and you can rent the whole. We've rented it. We've done it for like we film on it. You can sometimes. drive cars on it too. You can drive cars on it too. Yeah, I'm taking a drift car on it. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of drift fun. night on Thursday nights. Yeah, it's, it's kind awesome. Of, it's kind of fun. It's so funny. <laughs> drink beers, fun. drift cars, dude. You should this bring. Thursday. You should bring the the Scion out there when you get when you get an easy motor in it. Yeah, That's there's a, so it's so narrow. Like I've seen videos of probably you and I know I, I remember Hubenet driving the Viper out there, and he's basically doing a rolling burnout because it's like yeah. one and a half lanes wide. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it is tiny out there. You should we should try, get him to try drifting though. That's when you try dri- you do like a drift 101 up at Willow. That shit is real addictive. It's the most fun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I mean, look, I you know I've got some cars sideways before in my time. You know, I'm not. No, this is gonna be complete good. Complete novice. This is gonna be good. I've done some serious <laughs> melting down. Actually, the old, the old, the old 91 Crown Vic I was talking about. We used to melt that thing down. Oh yeah, was that the other show? The or was that this show? That was the last get it show. Sideways. We need to go. We need to back it up because yeah. before this show started. I don't so want to, Scott I don't and I had Tanner on that show, and then we just walked right into right. this one. Yeah. And I don't so want to dwell on, on Scott's dad, Clint Eastwood, but a funny Clint Eastwood anecdote is that he has a, a Crown Vic stunt car from a movie that he that's mobs right. around Los Angeles in. He's got two of them. That's actually. awesome. That's <laughs> hilarious and amazing. <laughs> those it's were so the, perfect. There are those the sweet years in those because you, if you were in drive, you could kick the parking brake and it wouldn't stick. <laughs> Because because it automatically released when you put it in drive, right? So you had a kick rear brake, and so you just turn in, kick the rear brake to kick it sideways and go straight Shut to the gas. You didn't have to like hold it or put a close. I didn't know for you had to hold the thing. If yeah, you, you used to, to have to reach down there and hold it and then kick it to get into the turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's got a big block V eight. I mean, it's 
You know, it was an old cop car. It was, yeah, they're hilarious. Zach had one for a couple of years, great. and it was yeah. great, yeah. great yeah. fun. Yeah. Like 70 really PSI in the back and an LSD, and it's just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> right But there's no bolstering. Speaking of bench seats, so like on left-hand slides, I was holding the wheel, but like, you know, leaned way over because there's nothing to hold you in place. Sure. But man, they're fun. They're super durable. Yeah. They, uh, that... The imagery of that is so great. I mean, especially like I'm just thinking Beverly Hills valets is where I'm thinking. Yeah, there's usually some head turning. Uh, they're like, was that just Clint Eastwood that knocked out of that piece of shit? Like yeah. old 91? It's like paparazzi. <laughs> it's good like paparazzi evasion oh, yeah. uh, technique. Yeah. Nice. So have you ever been involved in paparazzi evasion? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty. I outsmart them. Pretty. You pretty outsmart good. them? Yeah. Can you blow up your own spot as to how? Because I'd love to. <laughs> I really like to hear these techniques. <laughs> Well, part of it is just knowing, you know, knowing where these these guys like to hang out. Isn't and, it kind of easy to not like go where paparazzi though. are? Yes. Well, here's the thing. Everyone's a paparazzi now. Right? Oh, right. Because yeah. everyone's got a cell phone camera. Yeah. So, sure. you can kind you can outsmart uh, like a traditional paparazzi. Right. You can be like, "Hey, like, you know, I'm going to pick you up here. I'll go in a private garage here and there, you know, yada yada yada." Like but Joe Pesci in Casino cars all over. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> Everyone's a paparazzi now. Yeah, you have to be on your best behavior, and you can't just yeah. avoid them. I mean, we were we were what Point Doom, and that one yeah. dude followed us all the way back to Marina Del Rey. Ugh. It's like an hour. On <laughs> oh yeah, day. oh yeah, yeah. He, it's, yeah. I kind of think it's funny. I'm like, oh, he's gonna take an hour drive. Yeah, oh, it's like, come on, buddy. <laughs> you should look up what the going what's the going rate. Do you know what the rate is for an Eastwood original on uh, TMZ? You know what they're paying right now? I don't know. I, got, I wonder what I that guy's time is to follow you to Marina Del Rey from Point Doom. <laughs> it's it's got to be, be good. It's got to be real money. Be, I mean, we're not that. By the way, we're fucking smile, son. Sucker. <laughs> 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 By the way, rent needs paying. <laughs> Larry, Larry Chen's paparazzi stories were hilarious. Yeah. Chasing people in like modded 240s and stuff. And this, they, they had like... What Tahoe's with like curtains to hide that anyone was in there? It's very this, this crazy. dude he was uh, paparazzi, wasn't he? He was, yeah. So Larry Chen Larry, is like, so go ahead, Terry. You, t- you sell. Him. Oh, he's like a photographer in the automotive world, and he around drifting, and uh, he, I mean, he's he's just become uh, kind of the cream of the crop a little bit. And he's a great photographer, no doubt, and he puts in the work. Like he, <laughs> sure. For years, you yeah. see him everywhere. He I is thought that I had a travel schedule. everywhere. Yeah, every event I've ever been to, he's yeah. at. Yeah. It's crazy. And he was a paparazzi as well. And yeah, he back in the day, like like Max Peak Lohan, like sh- Lindsay Lohan head shaving era, he had a Nissan 240 stock and was a paparazzi and was like the initial D of LA, <laughs> like Asian guy paparazzi driving. <laughs> and he would, he said it was crazy. He said they'd be following these celebrities and there'd be lines of cars five blocks long. There's a train of them. Well, they had, they had informants. Them? You know, they had. He was like part yeah. of a crew. Oh yeah, and they had there's people like in a clubs. Like, crew. hey, so and so's here. Yeah. And they, it's it's. But he said they. Clever. I mean, they paid. You know, he said if he got he got one shot. I think it was like Lindsay Lohan or something. And it was one frame, and it paid his six months rent. You know, for him. Wow. Yeah. That was like but, I was like, was it really worth it? He's like, yep. I see. I see. <laughs> I see all these people. They they run or they they treat kind of. You know they they sort of play into it, right? When you when you're running from a paparazzi or running, I mean, of course they're gonna want to chase you. <laughs> you know, just like why were you the, running? Get why the photo you and move why on. You, you know you what chasing? I mean? Or if you don't, I mean, there are times I, I can understand it, but you could be smarter than like racing around. You know, totally. And I bet they're like, if you crash, I get a photo of that. Like, yeah, you know, it's, it's not yeah, safe. Of course, yeah, yeah, it's like with a black bear, you're supposed to charge them with a like a grizzly or something. You, you sta- make yourself. This is not safety big, advice. <laughs> like a buffalo, you stand your ground or something. Yeah. So, okay. So whatever. Don't, don't get that wrong, nope. Tanner. So, <laughs> <laughs> whatever so Tanner like, yeah. says. <laughs> don't take whatever I just said and use it for like some survival advice. But there's um. So I mean, so what's what the What do you method? do with the paparazzi? Yeah, what's the method? Well, I've had, some, I've had some smart guys outspar- out, that are usually, are usually, you know, drivers in other countries that outsmart them, you know, because they'll have, they'll have a secondary driver and all, and they will come and pull interference. Oh, nice. Or, or, or one guy will get out of the car. Uh, if I have like, I'll have like a multiple, like a driver and another guy yeah. and he'll get out of the car and just like lay down in the middle of the road. Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> wow. <laughs> what are you going to do? You're going to run over the guy. Jesus. Are you, uh, what country are you in? Who knows? Yeah. Is this Russia? <laughs> 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 
That's, I mean, I was going to say, someone willing to break a law on your behalf yeah. is great. Someone willing to lay down on the road so a dude doesn't take your picture. Yeah, and then he just gets picked up later. It's Priorities are a little fucked. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. I have nothing to live for anyway. <laughs> Maybe this time they don't stop. Oh my god! <laughs> so so right, that's uh, hard a dark turn. Sorry. So really morbid. Yeah, yeah my bad. It's okay. oh, that's fun. Paparazzi yeah, evasion. Basically. You don't do the license plate change up sometimes. Sure, you could do that. You do that? I'm pretty cool with them though. Like, I, I mean, every time I've ever had an encounter, I mean, I'm sure there's been some dicks along the way, but if, if you're, you're nice, nice to them, them and cool, like we're in the same business together, bro. Like, all right, take your photo. Like, and yeah, and on. then then you just kind of go about your day, right? I guess yeah. it's only when the crazy drama happens that then then it's sure. like you want them to. I don't know. The 91 Crown Vic sounds like probably the awesome. best evasion. I mean, they're going to be like, no, that's definitely not him. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> the car I had was a former detective car, and I drove by Venice once, and there were two live cop cars with cops standing by them, same color, same hubcaps. I was like, yes, yeah, I'm nice. super stealth. Except one night when I followed a bunch of street racers for a story down into Compton, and they were all looking at me like, are you a cop? Are you following us because you're a oh, cop? Yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. no, no, I just look like this and I'm wearing carpenter pants that look tactical. I'm not a cop. Though. I could see you being like a cop. You look oh, kind of I, like I a cop. looked, I tried to, I tried to make friends at a at a rave once, and boy did I look like a cop, and I did not You're make friends. You're definitely not a cop. <laughs> no, that was I look like a criminal. Whole thing, yeah. But did I, I, I think I said on this show last week that I, I yeah, because I smashed my, I dropped my phone into a urinal that I was pissing in, and oh, I continued nice. pissing on the phone. And, well, did you pull it out? I, I pulled it out after I was done pissing. I then decided it had to go, and I smashed it on the floor of the bar, and I had to get home, and I, I got let in by someone who said, in, into a building, the apartment building, and I got let in by someone who went, oh, you look okay. And I was thinking about myself and how I actually look, and I was going, I don't look okay. <laughs> no, I would never let me into a fucking building at 2 o'clock in the morning drunk as I was. Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> let me I, I was thinking in. about this. <laughs> they don't know how, like, the, what was it? The FBI was trying to get into a phone and have Apple unlock it, and they yeah. wouldn't do it. Yeah. So isn't it, if you had just thrown that phone away, couldn't nobody could have gotten into it? Anyway? I was drunk, and this was my, my theory. Smash the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of putting the piss back by your ear? And yeah. Yeah, exactly. I decided that other people, if oh, it was my own piss, there might have been a bag of rice, but other yeah. people's piss? I can hear the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking gross. Um, wait, so, Tanner, are you are not retired, but are kind of retired, but are you doing back, going back to TV at all? Uh, possibly. Yeah? We, we got a show in the pitch. We? That's, uh, we? Oh, you said I we. Can't, I can't say. Yeah, Please. Uh, I hope it's you and Rod and Adam. I really do. I miss uh, y'all. There's, yeah, no, there's stuff going on, and um, yeah, it's kind of a changing environment in TV. It's been great. Guys, but, it's been great. You yeah, guys, it's been great, Scott. But I'm out. All right. Scott Eastwood, ladies Peace, and bro. gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks See for coming you in, bro. Uh, you want to plug anything man. before you go? Uh, some Roadhead? <laughs> if you'd like to give Scott Roadhead, <laughs> I thought he was offering to give Roadhead. I mean, I'm going to be driving. <laughs> Wait, real quick. Uh, click over to Super Chat real quick. Do we have any Scott specific questions? Oh, I don't want to leave shit. any. Uh, if yeah. you want to ask Tanner a question, Scott's going to leave. These are uh, questions. Yeah, these are, yeah, people oh, make a donation, yeah. they can ask a question. Oh, damn. Uh, nothing specific money. for Scott? Okay. No. Cool. Okay. Cool. Thanks, buddy. Uh, and pretty soon we'll we'll probably we'll uh, promote your show when it goes live, yeah, we'll it. and we'll go hit the Thanks. skid pad soon, bro. Oh, yes. Can you. I get down on that oh, skid pad like action? I would like okay. to hundred percent. He's gonna be good. Thanks, He's got experience buddy. sliding cars. See you, bud. Appreciate it. All right. Oh, oh! I knew saw that coming. What, what was, was it? it? The fan. I put it somewhere it's where it was gonna get knocked over, and then come on, man. And then it got knocked over. Come on, man. Uh, kill that mic to me. Uh, all right. Now that he's gone, <laughs> now that he's gone, that took a long time. You're just Jeez. now that he's gone that, right away. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I love Scott. It's a great, nice bonus that he comes and records his show in here. Super, he was up in here with. Nice uh, he had a guest coming the other day. Who's her? Who uh, as like a sex therapist. Sex with Emily. Yeah, She's sex with Emily. Fabulous. She has a podcast as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. called Sex with Emily, and I would listen to it from the other room, and it was spectacular. Yep. No, it was very interesting. <laughs> sending, sending emails. I'm like, did I just? I did hear. Okay. God, my podcast with him was boring. <laughs> Jesus, really? That's what you're following up as a sex therapist? You know, y you just can't beat that. Doctor Ruth is probably still crushing it. I'll see life. Oh, fuck it. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. She's, She's got to be in the late eighties and Damn. definitely crushing Dr. it. Doctor Ruth. I forgot about yeah. Doctor Ruth. She probably gets fucked. 
Emily Still. was with Dr. Drew. She came up Gross. with that with that era in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, I came uh, up with Dr. Drew. Yeah, Love Line, yeah. right? Yeah. Was it Love Phones before Love Line? There was uh, Love Phones. It, it, it's been was Love it? Line for a long time. I yeah. listened to Corolla back in the freaking high school. Yeah, yeah. And then did the first rendition of Top Gear with him. I, w- I auditioned for that. I remember that. Oh, I remember yeah. that. And I auditioned for that, and they asked you and me to go out in a Cadillac STS-V and drive around the block for 20 minutes and discuss the car without mentioning anything about the car. That was the thing. Was that, was that the it? Bit. I didn't what? remember that. Uh, yeah, people who win at things never remember them. Remember them. It's only people oh, no, who I lose remember, at things I remember, remember how they go. <laughs> I remember throwing the keys out of the car, though. Oh, yeah, you threw the key out of the car. Because we were because it was like a you know push-button start, which was sort of a new thing at yeah. the time. And it was like, well, does it just freaking die if you if the keys are not in range? So I chucked them out the window, thinking somebody would see where they were. <laughs> Nobody saw where they were. We had to go back and search for them oh, before wow. turning the car off. 20 minutes later yeah but it kept running right it did it, yeah, yeah, running. Right. It, it beeped a couple times and then it was like we decided that you could actually carjack someone and get somewhere yeah <laughs> just once you turned it off you're screwed yeah. that was yeah. a really fun experience i felt like i was i had been making car videos for like less than a year and it was like <gasps> top gear called and i was like yes this is my <laughs> chance is it didn't go that way. That would be a pretty crazy experience. Just seeing that it was a crazy well. showing up at Adam yeah. Carolla's garage, and here's Tanner, and you were, I guess, a pretty like a just a drifting rock star at the time, really, right? Yeah. You had you wait. This is oh nine, ten, nine. So like, yeah, you were like a star race car driver, but not a TV person. That was really. Really. drifting. I'd done um, some shows like uh, uh, Supercars Exposed. Oh Did yeah. You ever see or Battle yeah. of the Supercars yeah. with Paul Tracy. Yeah. Remember that. And then before that was like a red line TV, which six people watched. And then uh, Import Racers. Oh, yeah. So this is the- you was it, Wasn't Import Racers like a shot at, uh, uh, what do you call it? Best motoring? No. Oh, okay. Import Racers was, it, it evolved, but it was just went to the events I was doing, Time oh, Attack okay. or whatever, drifting and stuff like that, and just did some stuff. I should be that If you go back to TV, best motoring would really be. Oh, I'm still trying on. to get that get that have to happen. It's, it's all, we know how hard it is to get OEMs to agree to a two car comparison, oh let alone God. like a seven. You yeah, know? but oh, by hey, wheel to wheel, by the way, we'd like to wheel to wheel race your cars uh, for this show. <laughs> Turo okay. should, should sponsor that. <laughs> that you're never going to get access like that. I'm serious. <laughs> Turo, you you oh got the money God, probably. Insurance, but yeah, that. Um, did you ever see? I mean, I guess you did see the finished uh, uh, first Stromer pilot, right? Oh, Eric yeah. Stromer? That was yeah, his name, yeah. right? Stromer, which I see on uh, Corolla's um, social media. They're doing stuff constantly. Oh, are they? Yeah, I think they do it like a construction show. Oh, does he? is he in that How to Catch a Contractor or whatever you know, show? He must be, because yeah, he's on there uh, quite a bit. Yeah. yeah, I never actually met that guy. By all accounts, he awesome. was pretty chill, actually. He was awesome. Yeah. yeah. I hated him because he took, quote, my seat. Yes. Yeah. Now, Stromer was great. Corolla was amazing to work with. He had, I mean, he just is so to the bone- one of the funniest guys ever. And one of the hardest workers. I tell everybody I know, because when, when I did end up shooting the show with him later, the Speed Show. Yes, he would, that's he, right. Yeah, the car show on Speed. Yeah, he cranks. Yeah. He, to his credit, he he brought me into that show. And yeah. so that was I appreciated that very much. But he would show up, and Zach will tell you, to set. And in between takes, he's writing a book in his car. And then he goes and records it's a crazy. podcast on the way to the fucking Morongo Casino. Tasting a little Mangria here. Mangria. He's got this going on there. Yeah, The he guy would. juggles 17 pins and gets yeah. it done. That's why he buys Paul Newman's race cars. Yeah. We were doing uh, the runway bit when he had the Rolls Royce yeah. and uh, what you had like Ford the 4GT the, the and, yeah, and he like we, he had like a 30 minute break and he just drove like over there in the Rolls Royce with his writer uh, Mike Lynch I think and they just recorded like 30 minutes of stories for his book that came out like a year later and he would just every free second he's doing something I've never That's seen wild. anybody do that and yeah. the guy is so quick he's so fast and funny he said okay while well, we're talking about Corolla last thing but he I, have you ever seen a stand up yeah Okay, so he he does a, used to do this bit where it was, um, you know, give me something to rant about. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember that? Uh-huh. And uh, the reason I bring this up is because the one that I went to down in Irvine at the Improv, somebody gave him Roadhead to uh, rant about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Since this has been the topic of, of the hour, yeah. And it was uh, freaking funny, but the um, that's the thing is it, it, the comedians that came on after that were like. 
Nobody does that. You know, yeah. people come on with material. Nobody just says, you tell me what to make up material on the spot about. I've only seen it a couple of times and it's been like real proper genius. Yeah, exactly. There's a guy in Vegas who I tell everybody about called Vinny Favorito, who's mm-hmm. like an old school Vegas guy and he's the Flamingo and he does 90 minutes of crowd work. The guy's like 75 it's like years Rickles old. like Rickles style. And all he does, and he remembers everything. Wow. He does callbacks from like an hour and a half before he he called on me for something and I met him in the hallway after the show like half an hour later he remembered my name wow it was like a mental exercise I've never seen before it's one of the most impressive things I've ever seen in someone do I have a hard time remembering my freaking phone number yeah, yeah I can't remember <laughs> shit <laughs> someone asked me what it did on Friday this morning what'd you do Friday <laughs> And I, I was hanging out with Jay Leno all day in Seattle driving rally cars. That's what I did. And I go, fuck, Friday. What did I do? I couldn't remember. It. It's the That's biggest hilarious. problem with doing podcasts, to be yeah. honest, because I'm, you know, was talking to Scott earlier and he's like, oh, where do all, you know, where'd you, how'd you get started in racing? He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I didn't know we were going to have to think on this one. It's like, and you got to remember that stuff. And it, it, yeah, it's, it's terrible. And then when you have kids, you see how how fresh their brains are you're like mm-hmm. jesus it's well, just fill you with old. all kinds They're of just sponging things. sponging yeah I, I just say i don't remember non-essential things like if it's essential to my survival i'll remember it and if i if it's not i probably won't or i'll, or I'll google it which is stupid yeah at least you won't ask someone else to google it for you that is the most annoying thing in the world <laughs> <laughs> which happens <laughs> which our fans do sometimes. uh what's your uh what's your street car situation at the moment um, what are you rolling anything fun a uh, couple things i mean i've so sponsored by Volkswagen, so I got one of each of those. But one of each? I mean, almost. No, not really. <laughs> they, they've got a few. <laughs> yeah, a lot of models. No, I I mostly drive um, a Golf R. Mm-hmm. That is the you know one of the last remaining manual um, you know new vehicles <coughs> RS. you can Sorry. get. <laughs> a new Volkswagen you can get. Yeah. And um, Yost Capito, who actually is the godfather of the Focus RS, uh, the previous version. Um, you know, he's at Volkswagen and he now runs the R group and, uh, he came, he, you know, he left a McLaren to run formula one. Now he came back to Volkswagen. It's a good guy to have. He's an awesome guy. He's the one that hired me at Ford and he went to, uh, he ran motorsports at Volkswagen when I went to Volkswagen and now he's at the R group. And so now is the R a group? Are there more R's besides, uh, besides golf R it's, I mean, it's a whole group that it also covers the R line, which is like a trim package, um, and their accessories department, but it is a massive, uh, I mean for Volkswagen standards, not that big, but it's like a 300 million euro, uh, uh, part of VW. And um, so, in the future, I think, I mean, the, hopefully, the plan is there's going to be a lot of our versions. That would be good. Versions. That'd and, be good. And like they're all going to be monsters. And so, I'm really excited because, you know, there's a lot of the lineup that is, um, you know, a lot of cars coming out of different manufacturers that lose the passion. It's all about the automated this and mm-hmm. the self driving that. And it's uh, nice to be a part of the part of the brand that's going to be the passionate side. You drive TTRS yet or RS3? I have not. Those oh, the are, RS3, yes. Those yeah. are hot. Yeah, it is there's, an awesome machine. There's APR's got one with like three parts and a tune on it that runs nines on drag radials. Good God, <laughs> amazing! Yeah. So I do. I did get a GT3 from the. You know, we'd driven one in the show, uh-huh. and it was just awesome. So a I new, a one new one? No, it's a 15. Oh, okay, cool. They're, um, not, they're great. Which I love, and I. But the, um, you know, I did the. I went over last week to the one lap of America. Stopped in. Have you, are you familiar with this? I race? raced it you in 2013. It. Okay, 13. Yeah, it was okay. extremely difficult and extremely fun. Yeah, ex- that's what it seemed like. I just yeah. went for two days for Odyssey batteries, and uh, but those guys, like they, they a lot of them, as you remember, just go buy a car. They're like, oh, I read about this sweet ass <laughs> eight day race. Yeah. I'm just gonna go get a McLaren, or yeah. I'm gonna go get a Porsche Turbo, which I think is the way to go. Porsche Turbo. Yeah, I strongly recommend it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because it's comfortable on the road. Yeah, mm-hmm. if it rains, you're you're good. Mm-hmm. If it's dry, you're good. Totally. Um, but yeah, so a lot of those cars are just like turnkey race cars. But it's an amazing event. Eight days, you, you're on the track like two, three day, times every day. Yeah, you run two five lap sessions a day. Is yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, two five lap sessions a day. No, and then drive yeah, morning all night, and afternoon, basically. and then yeah. See, it depends. If you're really fast, then you finish your second session just after lunch, and you're done at like one or two ah. and then you leave and whenever you get to the next place and you that's when you go to bed if you're slow you don't finish your second session till like five o'clock and now you got to drive 700 miles before you go to bed starting at 5 p.m like oh it's brutal 
So if you're fast, you get to leave early, and it's good. So it pays to be fast. I mean, they, some they had a TB, like a transit bitch. Right? Oh, like, yeah. well, if you're at that level, yeah, so, you get the racing driver and yeah. then the transit driver. I yeah. would never, ever in my life be a transit driver. <laughs> imagine. Fuck that, dude. Well, it's the social media guy or something, right? The guy who, you yeah. know, from the shop. Fair. Yeah. yeah Lee nice. Keen, you know, my friend, just m- destroyed one lap for like three years in a row. Mm. Uh, this company, Top Speed Motorsports, they'd build these like 800 horsepower GTRs with active aero I mean, and GTR shit. GTR would be a pretty good one. Yeah. And they would, and he, you know, he would have the fastest laps. He'd be, he'd go first. And when he would go, everybody would go watch Lee just like put on this driving clinic. He broke like two track records during the thing. I mean, it was really. Did he have those? The, the yeah, the arrows. Aer- I remember that in SEMA. I was like, I want to put that on a drift car. Yeah, aero yeah. motions wing and it, craziness. And I watched his in car later and I, I was so depressed because at one point he's setting like a record lap and he's fucking changing the music on the radio. And, and I, I was the like, back I straight. hate you so much. <laughs> Dude, I've got to move this fan that's got. For you. Are you guys not freezing no, right now? Jesus. <laughs> the this beautiful red curtain that we had, that we have, just turn it off. It it blocks all the air conditioning vents are on the back side of the curtain, and after two do. hours, it gets hot. That sound? Yeah, the Did, click. Has it always been the fan that causes the click? No, that's the first time I mm. that it's been on ever because it was mm. getting hot before. But it's sorry, Tanner, You're freezing ice ice legs. Oh, man, <laughs> <laughs> you wrap this up. Ice it's like legs. a casino. <laughs> um, we got a bunch of questions on the super Let's chat, so we got about half super hour funny. of show left, but a bunch of questions for you. So, uh, if you want to ask Tanner or me or Zach or anyone a question on the show, join us live on super chat. Uh, for those of you joining us not in real time you have to follow me on instagram twitter facebook whatever when we post these shows actually if you're a youtube subscriber also i think you get a notification right? Should. totally live is the future my friend live is the future we hope uh let's see steven cusick oh oh yeah i was just in seattle did you go to this place the shop yeah they someone said you we just we both just visited there it's like a car storage place that's actually got a full restaurant and bar in it. Now, I was Whoa. there, and I ta- I ran into you somewhere like the next day. Didn't we talk about it? Or did you? No, did I was we- talking to you about the place that I'm building up yes. the road that we just that I broke ground on this morning. And I think I was telling you about uh, that I just been to that Possibly. place. Possibly, yeah. It's pretty cool. It's a, And it's a good way they, they do it, too. You know, with a, a, you basically have a chef, and the chef's getting a cool location for a restaurant, and they don't have to buy anything and yeah. build it. And, and can you just can the public go in and look at what's being stored there? So or no? yes and no. So like there, you walk in the front and it's a huge warehouse, it's like fifty thousand square feet. And you walk in and there's it's like a diner, you know. And there's a couple cars on display in the front, and there's a full bar, and there's some windows where you can look into the storage area. You can't, and there's like a you can go sort of in the storage area into like a corralled area. Gotcha. I mean, I got a tour, so there's probably like I don't know. 150 cars in there maybe maybe more there's think, a bunch yeah yeah at least that yeah. we, were, we were there for forza and because this we were doing this thing where we were racing cars in the game and but you pick them out of this warehouse and they have like 700 and something so you basically so you, pick anything in the warehouse cool. and then go drive it in the game well, that's a good that's a good promo yeah yeah it, is. it was awesome um but yeah and then so it's, i think it was 200 dollars a month to keep your car there but then they have community lifts and tools so you can work on your car Seriously, there that yeah, is so right. worth yeah. it yeah and then there wow. was a separate like members area also where you can cigar drink or whatever room cigar room and, it yeah, was dope that's cool I could never really do it. Cool. You need space. You need a lot of space. And yeah, you can't do it here, but that's but what, it was, if you if live I up lived there. in Seattle, wow. I'd definitely be a member and hang out there all the time. It was great. Uh, that was fun. Did you did you uh, have any other thoughts on that concept? Other than being cool, I loved it. I have wanted to do it for for a while. Talked to some people about that, and it's just the building space is so hard around here, in as LA. you know. <laughs> I mean, uh, but the idea of a restaurant, it went. I wanted the cars to be the ones that we talked about doing to be a little more involved in the restaurant maybe you're above them and you're on a clear floor or maybe they're in a box i mean obviously you don't want people poking at your million dollar cars right but, um but i mean i just love the idea of it i thought um, it was neat they're really nice people i would definitely hang out there if you're in seattle go check it out you can go eat or have shop. a drink or whatever and the food is actually really good i didn't eat but it did it looked like there were people at the restaurant enjoying it my spot uh west side collector car storage broke ground today in LA, there is not going to be a restaurant <laughs> congratulations what's the square footage on that so it's thirteen thousand square feet Wow. But underground, yeah, 44 cars, and then I bought 18 quad stackers. 
Which I didn't know exist. I knew there's three. Yeah. They're like a triple there's, stacker. There's four stackers. They've never, no one has never been installed indoors in Los Angeles before. Mm. Los Angeles is a whole other fucking crazy bag of worms. Okay, so I. It's 150 you know, cars total. It's a Tuesday, clouds clear out. <laughs> Look outside, blue skies cracking through. I'm like, you know what? I want to. I just want to get my beetle out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go for a drive. It's on the third right. level. What yeah. does that take? It's not that bad. You'd have to move the cars out from underneath it, but okay. it's not that bad. I mean, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Really? Yeah. If you left That's your awesome. house that was a few minutes away and you and you called and said, I'll be there in 20 minutes, we could probably get a car out for you. Now, people cool. are going to, I will place cars on the racks. If you if it's a car you drive with some frequency, it wouldn't be on the third rack. Right. It would be somewhere that's a little more accessible. There will be plenty of cars in this place that never move. Sure. And they'll be up top. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, unfortunately, there's a 100x multiplier between the racks you have to move cars out from under and the ones you don't. The ones that move themselves out of the way, like fucking forget it yeah. automated robots and oh know, the like the car the vertical fuck carousel yeah, thing bro, yeah 100 million dollars forget mm -hmm. it it's just you know you're you're building a shopping mall in hong kong if you're buying Jeez, one of those. those are they're really cool but yeah yeah it'd be funny if it was your race beetle though it's like yeah, can you guys bring it down to the ground floor <laughs> and then also hook up the block heaters so that's all warm when i get there and the tire warmers great thanks Hey Sweet. man, Do you have Every, my helmet cleaned up. Yeah, everything my suits has a all price. Laundered. I got you. I got, I got you. you covered. Uh, all right, consumer advice: entry level sports cars. 2013 Mazda MX-5 Club. That's the sportiest version of that mm -hmm. car. Or same year, 2013 Scion FRS. Tanner Faust, do you have a say in this? Have you driven last gen Miata or early FRS? Mm, I'd take the Miata. You would? I would. Yeah, I just think um, the driving experience is a different level i agree i think the miata is more fun yeah and like the, mm. the engine is more fun the the scion is kind of a pathetic engine very true unless you're going to supercharge it then maybe the scion because the supercharge is good and i guess it's track car it's like if you're getting the club you don't because i think the frs is more livable but if you're getting a club you don't care so i mean that point. was a track car right and and probably okay in real world something nice about having a key fob you know so when you're comparing an older car i'd 13. See, oh, so they're both 13. Both 13. Oh, okay. I think you got oh, a fob you're good. and a 13. You're good. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. You're All not right. you're not putting Oh, no. The FRS, you turn a key. The BRZ gets a fob cuz it's fancy. Cuz it's fancy. Mm. But you get back seats, I don't know, with an FRS you get back seats and more space and stuff. But back if you're seats. I put backpacks back there. I don't put people back yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, you get a, a cloth covered shelf. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'd probably go with the Miata if you fit in it. Assuming you fit in it. If you don't fit in it, if you're too big for a Miata, you probably still will fit in the FRS. Um, ask Tanner how he sits with your balls so big. You do have balls. He's they also leaning big. one direction. I just <laughs> lean. I, I get my shoe size a little bit uh, bigger on the left side, and I just tuck them in there. <laughs> I'm going to rephrase the, the, his question. He's, he jokes, but when you get to a certain level of driving, you are able to do things. And I mean, you and the other drivers that are at your level, but to talk about you in particular, where do you break over the thing of that wall doesn't matter. I'm going to get, you know, an inch from that wall and that's not going to be a problem. Uh, I don't know. There's a, you know, when you walk a track, the wall matters Yeah, and you're like, why would they put a freaking wall here? You know, this somebody's gonna wad it up. There's gonna be a big fire right here. Mark my words. You know, every driver says that about. Yeah. That. And then once you hit second gear, all that stuff goes out. Yeah. And you don't notice that anymore. Now you're just thinking about the fast line. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's uh, it also matters what you're driving when you when you have a lot. Like if you've been to Fontana on the Roval, yeah. where you're turning at 150 miles an hour, you start to think about who torqued. You know the front right <laughs> yeah. lug. So yeah. when you're driving uh, with a crew like with Andretti, like I'm lucky enough to drive with, you don't worry about that kind of stuff. Right. And suddenly all those little walls and all those little side thoughts never come into play. So you can just drive fast. So I, I don't know. I don't know where it hits, but for me, uh, drifting was the best trainer for that type of mental fitness. Because with drifting, when you qualify, the closer you come to crashing, the better your score. Mm. When you're racing, like you literally, you cannot have a plan. I, I've said, mm. I'm not even going to say Especially that. if you're in back, right? Your plan is get, get wherever he goes, I'm there. Right. There's no plan. You can have a plan at a level of aggression 
but some gray like you know level aggression setting but you can't have like this is going to be my break point this yeah. is going to be where i start accelerating again and so you just have to rely on this visceral ability and that's sketchy so that's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> did you ever have a point where uh you had like real mechanical sympathy or were you okay just going fucking my job is to go as fast as this thing will go and if i break it in the process that's life um, you can always break them. You can break million dollar cars, trophy trucks, rally cross cars, just like you can break a round car. You can always break it. So there's, uh, yeah, I think you always have to have this certain, this certain level of maybe our, our scales are off. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you're, you, you always can be the driver that, that destroys the car. So <laughs> you do need to, uh, have a little bit of mechanical empathy, yeah. especially in like mid 400 or something, you know, I was watching a video the other day. I think Larry Chen shot the video from his helicopter, but there was a Baja truck going, it, you know, compared to the other one that it was the example, it was like six tenths, but it was going through some whoops and it was kind of just going like this over the whoops. And then they, they pan left and there's a truck that's just full throttle, not giving a fuck and just his tires are just like skipping over the whoops. And, you know, and they are, they both had two very different approaches to this section. And the fast guy ended up passing the other one. And then he just took a track to the right of the guy, like through the bushes. Cause he's like, you're in my way. I'm going to go find a new direction. He's doing like 90 miles an hour. But uh, if he, if he didn't pre-run it correctly, or if there's like a new wash or something in the way, you can like find a hole and then shear off all your suspension, right? Off-roading is a totally, it's a, it's a weird, you're absolutely right. And it, but it's a weird beast. Like there's, and, and like with any racing, you know your weak link. So uh, if you're like suspension is super, super stout and you can, you've never had a break in suspension, you don't overheat the shocks, then you know that on those whoop sections, you can make up time where another guy is like, um, you know, I've had some failures in this joint or that joint. So I need to take it easy on these types of things, but I can haul ass on oh, these okay. types of things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, um, it's hard to trust the equipment in off-roading because <laughs> everything you say, everything your body's telling you is like, we're dead <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah. And then it just absorbs it. And you ever, you like, you hit a jump and you have no idea what's on the other side of it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just notes, that's nuts. That's what's so crazy about rallying or, you know, I don't know if you can speak to off-road racing. Ra yeah, rally, you're more committed in a different way you're not like committing the equipment to the the risk you're committing yourself yeah and there's with rallying it's a it's a great thing because you you know you got your co-driver telling you exactly everything around every corner and it's just how hard you're willing to um trust it yeah like theoretically you could close your eyes and you could draw what you know the whole road based on what they're saying and so you, you should ever do that to, as a trainer i've tried i've tried <laughs> that's cool yeah, it's pretty hard. Do that, and then you sit in the bathtub like Cool Runnings and lean your. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, fuck, I can't remember what they say when they're pushing the things, but yeah, feel the rhythm. Yeah, that's it. Feel the rhyme. Feel the rhyme. <laughs> Get on up. It's bobsled time. Yeah, you uh, had to know that. I'm didn't you? Fucking really embarrassed. I know that. <laughs> Psycho, you did. Um, all right. Will Tanner ever comment on being the Stig on U.S. Top Gear? It's released. It's out. What is? I mean, I don't know. That there was a Stig? Yeah. And that you were it? No, and that I wasn't it. Oh, who was it? If it's um, released, fucking say He's it. got a book. I'll only say it what, because Col he's got a Collins? book. Collins? Ben Collins? Nope. Oh. Um, God, am I violating something if I actually say a name? Paul. Not if he's got a book coming yeah, out. Yeah, good. That was the first name. I said it. Was... Oh, yeah. Paul Tracy? No, uh, Gerard. Paul Gerard? Yeah, he's got a book. Oh. Um, it's called The Optimum Drive. Oh. Yeah. All right, cool. Is he yeah. chill? Yeah, he's awesome. Good guy? Yeah, yeah. He's uh, done a lot of road racing, got a huge experience, and you should read the book, Optimal oh, Drive. Cool. It's actually really good. It's not about being Stig. It's about driving. It's about driving and human performance potential. Oh, that, that sounds like something that Tim would like. Yeah. Tim likes the human performance potential. I do, 100%. Yeah. All right, yeah, cool. Yeah, he'd like it, I think. Hey, I, don't yeah, think right. I don't think we're blowing up anyone's spot. The fucking, that show's over. What are you going to do? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you going to do? We had Ben Collins on the show, the uh, the British show, St the Stig, and he was absolutely great guest. Super that's, fun. That's awesome. And I think he's trying to move to LA. I hope he's yeah. going to be like, if he does, like we're going to be friends, and I'm excited about that. But we'll see. Uh, hey, Tanner, what was the best... Best time on uh, oh my god, <laughs> what was basically paraphrasing uh, your most fun experience uh, filming Top Gear? Oh, I know, so that's a, were, I know that's a very tough one. There <laughs> were two kinds of shows, right? There are the kinds with new cars, 
where it was great to drive a new car, and then there were kinds of the old pieces of shit where it was great to just bash into the other old pieces of shit out there. We know the feeling of that mm-hmm. one. Yes, <laughs> yes, I'm sure you do. Um, so I have a favorite of both, probably. The new car, just in mentioning it, there we did a show in Steamboat where in Colorado where I was an ice driving instructor. Oh, yeah. And I had a Porsche Turbo, and, and it just happened to be one of those weeks where they got dumped on and then bluebird skies right after that. Oh, yeah. So every road had the perfect coating of snow. You just had this crystal dust blowing behind the car awesome. sideways everywhere. Fifth gear coming through these tight little second gear corners, just all four tires you know, 80, 90 mile an hour wheel speed or whatever. That was awesome. The, um, in Alaska, finding the toughest truck was one of the first shows. Yeah, I remember that. That was a cool episode. Yeah. And just going in the middle of nowhere, I'd never been to Alaska. And it's like this, you know, it's the, it's the last frontier. I mean, place is insane. It's like the woods that never end, yeah. right? It's like thousands and thousands of miles of just trees. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's, it's wild. Like Rutledge had his, uh, car die. So he had to go get in. The The thing was you had to get in like a Toyota to finish the race uh-huh. if your American car died. And they're like, oh, we'll just leave it here. We'll be back down this trail in two days, and then we'll just, you know, tow it on the way out. And we're in the middle of nowhere. Hard to describe, like, how far. We're at the glacier edge, you know? Yeah. We go do our thing, blah, 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 bouncing through this and that, and, you know, cars are all just rubber band together and just so much fun just jumping the shit out of all these things come back that car is flipped over <laughs> on its roof in the middle of the woods like so deep in the woods you could never it was find not it. on its roof when you left it no correct it's flipped what? on its roof because they wanted to steal the rims off it and that's just <laughs> that's a how, really good strategy that's wow just so, how it hey works guys, we don't jack. <laughs> so some forest people just happened along it tipped it over with whatever pretty sweet it, rims wow <laughs> <laughs> Flipped that bitch on the roof and stole the wheels off it. That's just how, I mean, that's just how wild What do you then do? I don't even want to know. I don't, I, you don't have to say what you guys did. No, I don't, <laughs> now they got somebody to bring it out. What do <laughs> where, do, where do they sell the rooms? Like you're in the middle of nowhere. Where they're like, I'm going to put these on Craigslist. You know, it's going to be one of one person. He probably had whatever, sell them to whatever, Troy. Whatever, some old ass truck. They probably had one. They yeah, needed the right? rims. Probably. Whatever it was. It was a Durango. Yeah. It, it was a Durango. <laughs> I like those trucks. So they were like super bulbousy. They look like yeah. you put a bike yeah, pump in a truck totally. and inflated them. And they're always so loud. 5.9 liter or something. They always are so droney. Yeah. So, yeah, they're awesome. Uh, that was a good one. Oh, Matt, you're the man. Thank you. Thanks for your email response a couple weeks ago. Uh, when you, Oh, yeah, you're welcome. I'm happy to help. Uh, I'm an entry-level racing driver from the country of Georgia, parentheses, Europe. Thank you. I recently <laughs> mer- moved to Illinois, and I'm trying to get racing. Any suggestions? Yeah. There's a lot, a lot of things to do in Illinois. Well, I, there's, I, don't, I don't think there's any formula for getting into racing without yeah. like spending just a ton of money. Yeah, I mean, I would say you need to buy a race car that's of some kind, right? I, I mean, still, I still think drifting is one of the best ways to get into motorsport. It, why do you think for the that? money? Um, because a couple reasons. One, there's all these like feeder crews everywhere. You know, drift day, drift buffet were the old ones, but where you can just go out and do these days and get good and get and get friends that get free tires or cheap tires or whatever and get track time out of it um also but mainly because there's more money in low level uh drifting because it's a marketing thing not a racing thing right and so there's just more access to sponsors and you're 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 being sponsored by marketing people uh-huh. who just got out of college they're looking for their new thing put their mark on something you're not being sponsored by the 70 year old motorsport manager <laughs> who has all the bros that he shares a hanger with or whatever you know uh-huh. and you're never going to crack that nut but in lifestyle events and things like that, I think it's just way better chance if yeah. you're coming in without a pile of money yeah. or, you know, a name, you know, like Andre. Really or good something. really good advice. Yeah. There's a lot of local time attack series. If you're not into drifting, like global time attack and, and yeah, there's a t- yeah, totally. Red line time attack. Like if you want to build a grip car, like mm-hmm. in Illinois especially, like um grid life Midwest is up there. That track's there. fun. Uh, Tanner will out. be there. We'll meet. I'll be there. Unfortunately, I won't. I'll be at the one in Atlanta. When is when is the gr- grid life at? It's at uh, Grat, not Gratton. Uh, um, Gingerman. Gingerman. It's so fun. It's a great little circuit, and it's really great for having a party. Yeah, <laughs> it's it what it's I, good for. I think it's the eighth, ninth of June. Yeah, and so the good thing about grid life is it was started by a Midwest, a Midwest based Honda uh, track day club, and so going to grid life like. 
every fucking car there is home built. There's like maybe you'll see like one sort of newish Cayman and maybe you'll see a newish Corvette and maybe you'll see a newish Mustang. But for the best part of, of all of it, it's old Civics and Integras and 15 year old BMWs and shit like that. And so if you want to go find an entry level track day community, I would start at grid life. That's where I would start. We got actually got Rockstar involved. See this Haggerty Insurance and Rockstar. That. Get that on there. <laughs> um, they uh, so they're title sponsoring those Grid Life events. That's so great yeah, for them. It's, it's, it's awesome. they're really good people. Chris Stewart and his team and Austin and and all of those guys that run that shit. It's uh, really Adam fun. And I could I could list off names for thirty minutes of like great people who run at run Grid Life, but it's like it's really really a good time. That's cool. Good to know. It seems yeah. like there's a lot of accessible driving. You just need to decide what kind you want to do. Like, do you want to compete at racing or do you just want to do like like Honda Club driving? You know, you could yeah. build a Civic for four grand and learn a ton. Or if you're trying to like go pro in some way then maybe do what you said and go into drifting because they're, they're also expanding like the the pro they had pro one for a long time I mean, you know and now they have like pro twos getting popular because the pro level was like getting really hard to crack into so they're like expanding the number of yeah. um i guess classes there that there are which is really cool are the top level fd cars right now like beyond what someone could build yeah at home 100 percent. yeah right but no, the pro two cars you could yeah i think i, I i've a little out of touch with exactly how the builds are at the pro two cars but there's i know in the pro level cars yeah everybody i mean a lot of teams have their own cnc machines <laughs> there um, a lot of 3d printed parts in the cars um jr and, said his engine was like eighty five thousand dollars <laughs> so they're getting pretty, getting pretty techy and what's funny is the money is for the reliability so even the pro two cars are coming out with 1200 horsepower but they're not just starting it up and and doing run after run like you can with a pro car. Wow. Oh, wow. How about this? Our fans are great because someone, uh, let's say Juan Ramon. Juan Ramon yep. just chimed in. The gentleman from Georgia should check out Track Midwest Group on Facebook. Thank Sweet. You. Nice. There you go. Uh, Tanner Faust, top five drift drivers. Oh, come on. Really? That aren't you. <laughs> Tanner. Tanner. I don't. Tanner. You know, I'm have to, I will <laughs> have to. I literally have to look up. No, uh, let's do three. Top we'll, three. We'll, we'll, okay, top three. Who do you like to race against? How about we'll change the shift the question. Oh, Who's my, your favorite guy to race against when you're racing FD? Uh, when I was doing FD, um, my favorites were For Forsberg. Yeah. Um, just because there was there were no games there, just went 100 percent all out. Same with Jr. Um, and die. Oh yeah, old school. Uh, well, they're all still killing it though. Mm -hmm. They yeah. all they all still mobbing. Yeah, any any of those guys that were, um, you know, you knew them well enough that that once you uh, doored up with them, no nobody would try anything like oh you know I lift a little bit extra here and hey, they're they're one what tap you is tap you there the was door a, a phase bit? one of the reasons I kind of got out of drifting I think it's much better now but there was a phase when certain points on the track when people would sort of lift out of it uh, when you were right there you could almost you could see the hood right in your window and then if you touch them then and they made a mistake it's your fault mm -hmm. and that happened it was it was known a lot a lot of times when uh you know it's different in different areas of the world when some japanese drivers would come over or people from other areas sometimes that was a little more acceptable where they were and uh -huh. and so there was a little bit of a phase of that kind of bs and i always hated that it was like man just make as much grip as you can make the fastest freaking thing you've got and just lay down your lap and if the other dude's better than fine you need to do better about building your car i guess yeah um but uh yeah i always really respected those drivers a lot of the old school guys i haven't spent too much time with some of the newer ones since i've been out of it for five six years yeah but um you know either way it's it's uh it's a good time but yeah. do you find do you uh do you still get enjoyment out of doing car shit when you're not at work i mean you have a fun job but do you you know when you're doing you're not racing do you are you going yeah i'm gonna take my gt3 for a drive just for fun yeah that's the thing about having that car is that <laughs> it's you do have to go somewhere yeah um i was doing a commercial up uh, angeles crest a while ago good excuse the only times i got to drive that car up that road yeah because i you know i live pretty far south what do you have palomar right is that the closest I'm, to you um that's far south i mean uh going over to ortega highway is the closest oh, to me man. it's like ortega highway is beautiful but it's so busy and it's busy mm. and short yeah yeah there's it's so it's such a fucking shame that where you live is like where so many amazing cars are built yes. and there is fucking nowhere to drive them it's true nothing a angels crest is one of the best roads 
in the world. It is amazing. Yeah. I mean, just the speed is right, and you're pulling a G and a half <laughs> and just a streetcar and yeah. uh, you know the it's got the flow the, and, uh, the corner radiuses are really fucking bang on on mm -hmm. that road it's like they the are. perfect flow for like a 400 to 450 horsepower car it's like right on it's funny because it's a good recreational road right but yeah. then you know you talk to somebody oh we got this car we want to do this drifting stuff and you think Angela's Crest oh it'd be great go drift a car Angela's Crest you're committed because uh, <laughs> I mean wow. it's like really high speed yeah have you done that before oh yeah what for commercial uh for shows commercials Fuck. and i mean you're hauling and there's you know it's you don't even notice the cliffs before to <laughs> point before but jesus <laughs> drifting you do yeah it, no thanks i don't uh, think i don't think i'd have the stones for it i've seen people do it i don't think the big the big curve where the big concrete turnout is oh yeah everyone, i've done that one many times yeah I, yeah that one's it's, it, it's uh. the transitions that are the things the <laughs> doing one curve you know that's one thing but. well I mean I saw you drift the fucking snake that's that's challenging that's tight oh, that was awesome yeah. although in hindsight what that would being the, that the speeds are lower that might have that easier It'd than easier. Angela's Crest oh yeah think? oh yeah well in Angela's Crest if you're doing it for a show or something are you you're most likely in a stock car is it, so that is that more much more difficult than you know a stock yeah. car most like right now is like 600 horsepower like an E63S or something like that versus 8 with a handbrake uh it's it's the spread is getting bigger now between doing like a, a shoot in a purpose-built car and a stock car because the handbrakes yeah. don't exist anymore mm -hmm. yeah um, traction controls are all kinds of crazy yeah so off if, might not mean off sometimes if you have a if, if you have abs even um when you have a car without abs you've got a bailout at least you got a safety net. Like you, you hit the full lock on the steering, you're rotating around, at least you can just lock them up. When you know your momentum wow. is going down the road, lock them up and let it slide to a stop. But now that you have ABS, there's no bailout. So if you hit full lock on the steering, it's an oh shit moment for sure. And you it, might just- You're on a it. ride. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you might arc it off into the inside, which I almost put a car off doing stunt driving for the British Top Gear. Um, when those guys came over as like a red Corvette. And oh, it was a ZR1 in Nevada, yeah. right? Yeah, so I was doing the ZR1 driving. That was when I learned Jeremy Clarkson didn't do his own driving because that was an impossible shot for a TV show host to fucking get. I remember that slide. It was the grippiest road you've <laughs> ever seen. And, it, and the, the tires on the ZR1 and the thing makes a ton of grip. Yeah. And uh, they're like, yeah, just, you know, every time it's like bigger, 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 bigger. And I remember that shot. It was an yeah. epic shot, and I went, there's no fucking way. And then I saw you in Ely, Nevada, after you did it. Oh, because you were at- Because uh, I was running Silver State that's with right. Rob Ferretti, that's and right. I saw you and uh, whoever the producer guy was and all the cars from that. Yeah. And I was like, now the sausage is made. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's got to be about sausage with you. I don't- but yeah, I mean, I love <laughs> dicks. Is it because of my love for dicks? Is that yeah, what it has yeah. to do? I love gonna... the cock. Um, yeah, say that. That's the TV <laughs> stunt driving is a fun gig, though. Do you get enjoyment out of that, or is it? I do. Yeah. Yeah, it's another level. I mean, it, you 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 have to consider where the camera is, what the camera can see, what the personality of the driver is supposed to be, unless it's Jeremy Clarkson. Yeah. The, where you wear the mask? Yeah. No, I didn't have to. <laughs> they didn't have those then, but. The um so there's uh, like with movies it's great because you get to act with the car kind of I can't yeah. act in person so with the driving though it's way easier. Oh, didn't you do the the fucking didn't you do DK's hand shooting while driving? I thought I remember I you did. telling me that once. Yeah, right? that was it. You had to go sixty miles an hour backwards. So you know you did a one eighty and nosed up with Samuel who was in the orange car and I was in the DK gray car. This is Tokyo Drift, uh, Fast and Furious, and going sixty miles an hour backwards, which a Z will do by the way. It's kind well, of I didn't really yeah. realize that that. Really? Yeah. So it's good for, That's for real fast. Geared for 16. <laughs> Fucking, I mean, it was, I don't know what the exact number was, but it, yeah, that'd be, enough. it, it was enough that if you got one little wobble, you're fucked. <laughs> in a parking garage. It, it, well, this is down right down the street in LA. This is like in, uh, you know, what, a Hope Street or something oh, like right. that, right? And, um, and his, yeah, it's bumper to bumper. And then this guy had been working out like three months, right, to get big. The guy who's DK. Oh, yeah, yeah the, the the actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's all buff, and then my skinny little arm pops out. It's like, pack, pack, pack. <laughs> you know, with the gun. And I'm sure he's like, what the fuck? Like, when he saw the movie, that's probably it's something like, oh, that come stuck on. out to him. It's a continuity it's the only idea, shot yeah. that shows yeah. his bicep. Yeah, it's all like three months in the gym, and you use this little guy's arm. Yeah. So funny. <laughs> 
Yeah. That the, actually, the driving is really good in that movie. Although the, the scene where they're having the calm conversation while like screaming up a toge, and he's it like, "Tell me about life, sweetheart." Me. It's like then it's quiet. I'll yeah. tell you about that scene. <laughs> okay, that was uh, that was the hardest night. Because that was a scene when five cars were supposed to be back to back, maybe seven. Yeah, it was like a long tandem. It was downhill. Uh, it was on. It just had a, a little curb and a cliff. It was like Griffith Park somewhere. It's one of those little roads. That was oh, here. Yeah. Yep. Oh shit. It was a. It was. it was a little curb and a cliff, and um, it was the R8, which was the hardest one to drive. RX8. 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 Thank you. Yeah, Different sorry. car. So I had to wear that wig. <laughs> and the please tell me you have a picture of the wig. and the big cotton things on the like the cotton things would get stuck in my mouth. I don't know what's happening. The, pom- what were the, pom- the pom-poms on her hair. No, it, her jacket had like oh. uh, you know big cuffs that are swinging around and swatting bees in there. It looked like a, a good seizure going on the wheel because it was like electric steering. The thing was not sorted out. It was really a hard car to drive. Downhill drifting. It was poor, like partly wet, partly dry. And um, you'll know, sweat, just wig hair sticking to your face. You're trying to peel it away. like. And, and then I saw the film, and she's like, I just, my cat was a little sick <laughs> this morning. And, <laughs> when, you know, when I was a so child, quiet. my military father used to hit me, and you go, uh-huh. And then they, uh-huh. cut to, and they cut to the outside shot, and it looked like, I guess they just put filters on it, because it didn't look like, it looked like CGI. It didn't look real. And it then lo- when you pair it with the in-car, you're like, oh, they probably CGI'd this, because that, but now hearing from you, they like they did the whole, you did a whole train there of cars. There could have been some CGI. Oh, wow. With the train of cars, they did multiple runs, like three at a time, and then they would put cars between Stitch each other. Stitch it together. Yeah. Yeah. So the cars weren't as close together. And you could have done it if it was uphill. Yeah. For example, so but funny. everything had already been planned out for the lighting, you know, because that's one thing you don't think about when you see a movie like any Fast and the Furious movie that's at night is that that means all of this shooting was done in the middle of the freaking night. Yeah. So you had lunch at midnight mm-hmm. and, you know, breakfast at six in the evening. And so you're there. They have to plan all the lighting like out. Three for quarters of that movie takes place at night. Yeah. It was three months. Of and shooting all the night. driving, I think. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's true. Nuts. That's cool. Yeah, we didn't ask Scott cool about job, Fast though. Eight at all. What? <laughs> we didn't ask Scott about Fast Eight at all. <laughs> That's what we do on this show. We'll get him back. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Seems cool, like a man. real cool job, man. And you have to be perfect every time, like through hours and hours and hours. Is that is that one of the more challenging parts? Like the, there's the mental focus of like, you know, we've been doing this for three hours, four hours, and I've got to hit the same line every time. You know, from TV and from movie stuff, it's. Ice cold, doing nothing, delays for hours, yeah. and then all of a sudden action. Yeah. And so it's it, the hard part, I think, is just being on right when you need to be. And um, there's, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is a, that is a, a great job, great part of the industry. But, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be like, oh, let's go look at the road. Let's look at the cars, check the tire pressures. Oh, do you need some practice for this? Um, yeah, you know, it's the first time driving this car and this road. You know, it's it might like, you be. You want me to drift a UPS truck? Right. I might want to try. It <laughs> might be good to like go through it once and be like, "All right, great, we're shooting the her rehearsal." You know, and they get the cameras all out, and there, and then the rehearsal becomes like action anyway. Yeah. And so there's ha- there's hardly ever any practice at all for any of that stuff. So the key is there's to know never, how to back it down. Is there wow. ever a situation where it's like, okay, I know I'm gonna have to go around this thing and then do a 180 reverse into this spot and you can actually go out and like map it out with cones and in do a it church parking lot somewhere yeah then and and practice that yeah. and then you'll get there on the day and it'll be wet or it'll be a different thing there's it'll a lot completely change the conditions yeah it i mean you just have to adapt to that stuff yeah. did um, you ever have a real a real almost think you think your career is over where you're doing a stunt driver and, and you just like wrap the car on a telephone pole or something i crashed one car a little bit in uh just a little bit in um need for speed need for speed one of those that's, silver so, that's what that movie's about anyway yeah. one of those silver <laughs> mustangs i mean it was still usable we still finished it yeah it wasn't bad though but when you come in as so so most of these cars are terrible Right. Yes. Like most of them don't work. The cables are stretched on the parking brake or whatever. It's just they're they're pretty bad. So what stunt guys have been working with for since the bullet beginning of driving time, been terrible cars. Just now they're starting to get. And Fast and Furious was the first movie I worked on where instead of building nine of those Z's, mm-hmm. uh, 
we being um, myself and really more Reese Millen convinced them to just build five and make two of them awesome. And then whenever there was a crash scene or is going to jump, use one of the other ones. That like, almost seems really obvious right that you should it, have a really does. good driving one right but <laughs> the but the driving is generally a, to a crash that's true in movies yeah like just get from here to the crash and then <laughs> <laughs> that's true but there's that's rarely the case like, with every crash yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry they'll meet us at the site of the crash <laughs> yeah <laughs> just make sure it lands exactly this way yeah uh, but you know if you want anything technical out of the car it needs to have a skill set too you know the right differential handbrakes yeah. and power and so has that continued now for some movies yeah now you can get a, a movie car that drives properly yeah i actually bought a movie car after using it in the movie really what, it was, what, so was, that? what was that it, it was a 68 camaro out of fast and F or uh, need for speed oh really yeah one of those early green ones it, it had an ls3 crate motor the movie was sponsored by magnaflow it had a new you know one and a half weight diff and a you know gearbox out of a corvette and what and all heim jointed and coil over and wow Ooh. awesome and a, and a 68 body it cool was freaking great yeah you get good price my friend i did I there think you go it's like i like I that got two of them you got two of them yeah identical <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> yeah total I movie car gave one to rut and uh oh, that's great we both have sold them since then he sold his then i sold him mine and but I just couldn't have it. You know, the, it is still a movie car, so the drive shaft could come through the body right. at any second. Um, Road could, legal though. Yep. Yeah. Couldn't drive my daughter around in it, and I was so tempted to drift every on ramp. Understandable. Ever. Well, you could. I mean, you can find uh, pro touring cars now are a good bargain because they were peaked like six years ago. So there's a lot of really awesome. I mean, first gen Camaros were definitely the most sought after one, but you could probably find a really well built one, and then. You know, go through it yourself so you don't worry that the drive shaft will come through the floor. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I don't know, enjoy it. They're awesome. They're so good. Yeah, they're really fun to drive. If you wanted actually. a good one, there's a company in North Carolina called Detroit Speed. Rut knows them. And okay. they they build them. They okay. build them to drive like your FD car almost would drive. Oh, wow. Like without the crazy fucking rack, but like yes. the rest of that. Yeah. Have you, you know, been They to all Optima? do the Hotchkiss autocrosses and Optima Challenge. Yeah. Hmm. That's I, yeah I went to the first one. Yeah. Um, in uh, remember, I built a, a Focus RS, that gray thing back when I was with the Ford. front wheel drive one, right? Yes, yeah, 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 the one that like you couldn't have, or was it a Fiesta? It was a Fiesta RS, I think. That was the only time I went there. Paul Fucking Tracy came out with a ridiculous Camaro and smoked everybody, I think. Yeah, the, I mean, the, cars the that top show up now. five cars that show up there are usually pro touring classic cars, and then Danny Pop shows up in like a C5 Z06 with tire warmers, and it's like the pro touring cars can get really really high level but if you start with a platform that's 50 years newer like and you put the same work into the suspension mm, sure. it's probably gonna win well there was yeah. a guy you know at road grid life atlanta last year if you go to atlanta you'll see him he's running a, a twin turbo 69 camaro setup and he's running laps at road atlanta jrz shocks the whole fucking deal right big corvette brakes and everything and he was running 27s at road atlanta which is like what you'll run in a corvette z a new corvette z06 whoa yeah and he was like mobbing and and getting on it like no arrow no problem just go <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> all right <So> cool <laughs> but it can be done it definitely can be done um you'll also see the world's fastest integra at road atlanta that runs 23s An integra wow. craziness wow. um you want to plug anything while you're here you know just want you to make sure that you get your insurance from Haggerty. There's, uh, there you go. I just got to take care of you. I was going to do an integration on this show, which we're supposed to do, but I didn't get this week's newsletter. So hopefully oh. we'll get it by this afternoon and we'll do it with Steve Dynan. For those right. of you watching live, Steve Dynan, famous BMW tuner, is going to be here this afternoon. Is he's he really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's, he's awesome. Uh, he's good friends with uh, Paul Gerard, aforementioned. Oh, really? Oh, we'll, yeah. we'll discuss that. Bring it up. He's There's... the man, dude. And his cars, uh, we drive, all the Dynan cars come through here. They're badass, man. Yeah, they are badass. They're super, super fast. I would would say that uh, if anybody anybody listening or watching that the um, to keep an eye out I know we can't talk specifics about it but for the rallycross series coming to America it may have the the letters of the series maybe a uh, reference to it being the American rallycross okay championship something around those lines <laughs> but because um, uh, theoretically it's in America and it's rallycross it, and there'll be a championship 
Right, right. Yeah. It's an American or Rally be- Cross Championship, so it would be titled something that's a- oh, appropriate. Like the- similar. Well, the- uh, theoretically. The theory. Yeah, 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 the theory. Okay. But, so um, if you, you want to take a few guesses at that and find the schedule that might come out at some point and come watch some Rally Cross. Hopefully in the next couple of days, yeah. It's going to be awesome. Might there be something happening in Los Angeles area with this series? Uh, hopefully. Probably not in 18, maybe 19. Okay. Well, if, we're, if there is, I want to come. Yeah. Now you gotta you get, get in. The, you know, there's, a, there's actually a two seats in those cars too. Sometimes. Oh fuck yeah, dude! I'm in. I want. I need to jump. I need Yo, full, the jump I need a full is full speed oh, jump. The, okay, the jump is at okay zero to sixty one point nine is pretty good. That's fun. <laughs> the um the jumps you'll be shocked. It feels like suicide coming up to the ramps and then um and in the air it's nice and everything, but it's anticlimactic on the landing because the the suspension is amazing. I've heard that we did a there's a place in Florida called the Firm. That is like a oh sure you know I remember place? yeah and it's like it's like the wild west down there it's yeah. great but they built a tabletop yep and I took like a group N Subaru over it you'd hit it at like I don't know forty seven or something yeah, like that a specific number and it was a, a pussy jump compared to the GRC jumps but it felt awesome yeah and it was like oh I get this this is good yeah there's a so there's I would, also I would a, love to go with you there's so. another one off event with Rally Cross that may or may not be happening that will be a mega jump. It'll Mega be, jump. Yeah, it'll be big. <laughs> well, the ones they used to set up for the X Games were sick because it's like here's your shortcut Joker lap, and you know the, one guy's going under and one oh car's going God. over, and if the, the throttle cuts, that he might make it, might not make it. I mean, it was crazy. Well, did they have the goodness. super dangerous ramp, the they steel did, they, ramp? Okay, okay this was just a bad idea. <laughs> that was a bad idea. This was a bad idea. It, it fit in the shipping container, but you couldn't jump it. And it thankfully, in three years of using it, it never rained once. I mean, can you imagine going up a metal Ooh. ramp in the rain? But it was, uh, yeah. So. That, that one was sketchy. You had to be within like two miles an hour or you'd clear it. A couple people landed short. Uh, that was what I remember. Yeah. I remember someone... Toppy hiking in. He went short. Who the went engine short had the really nasty crash. Yeah, that was yeah. Toppy okay. hiking in. The engine like kept going <laughs> and then the car crashed down. That's yeah. right. It fell into yeah. the... That yeah. Was, that was a really was bad idea. really, really bad. Did you actually... I can imagine having like a, like a pit speed button. You know, like to have an exact, to, to know the exact right speed. We didn't, we tried putting a mark on the tack and like a little digital tack, but you, then yeah. an, an engineer would say, oh, well at this tire pressure, you should be at 4,200 RPM in second gear. He was in the wrong gear is what happened to Toppy. Oops. He was in the wrong gear and went up to it at the right RPM. Oof. But, and I cleared that ramp one time and Travis cleared it, broke one of the Subarus in the middle <laughs> <laughs> and, and, like, and drove it correctly and that happened uh yeah it was just a couple miles an hour too fast <laughs> oh went to flat from like 13 feet oh, up cleared the yeah, landing cleared the land. oh my god that's when they used to run it on the nascar track yeah remember yeah, that? yeah yeah and so rally cross has had its storied history even though it's short history but yeah. storied in the u.s yeah Hopefully this next chapter will be a good one. Somebody just broke the uh, ski jump, long jumping record, and they were three feet from landing on the flat, from clearing the entire landing, and they landed at the very bottom of the ra- of of where it like too far. It was like two hundred and fifty something. <laughs> Well, yeah. every every couple of years, crazy. like Mini Cooper sponsors that guy that jumps. He sets the record for like longest car jump, and he do they do it in snow ramps. I don't yeah. know why, and it's like hundreds of feet, and it's a tabletop, and you just watch how fast and just and. <laughs> Just wait and see, and then they land, and it's okay. But it is a huge distance. Was this the guy me. that crashed? He has done he, that. He's trying to break the world record, mm-hmm. and it was like a thousand horsepower <laughs> countryman. Yep. Yeah. And and like seemed like he lifted off or something midway, and it just rotated forward and then mm-hmm. tumbled. Oh, can you actually control your pitch in the air with the throttle? Same the same as a motorcycle? Not as much. Okay. So what is the control? Brake is- brake brings the nose down, in uh, the it's Hot Wheels that works. In the Hot Wheels jump, it's more, um, you're already about at the rev limit, so uh-huh. you can't really add much to it. Okay. All you can do, you get one break, and even if you, and I did this like about 50 uh, practice jumps, you to try to you know work out aerodynamics, work out everything um, for the Hot Wheels jump. Yeah. You can, you can graze the brake a little bit if you need the nose just to pitch a little. If you need a little more, you can graze it a little bit more. Um, on the day of the Hot Wheels jump, uh, there were a lot of factors. It was down about 200 horsepower. Wait, what? Why? <laughs> it was like 25 degrees warmer on Sunday than Saturday, and they didn't want to rejet the thing. It was already parked up on top of the door, you oh know, 100 feet God. in the air. And so it was like, well, there was a bailout, 
but if you didn't get a hundred on the actual ramp, you weren't making the gap. Wait, so this was down loop jump? This is just the jump. Just the jump. This okay. is down a hundred feet and then a big ass jump. It had like a two hundred and uh twenty foot gap. Oh my god. And so if you didn't get a hundred, you wouldn't clear that. And we so I stayed full throttle further up the face of the ramp. You had to be 60% when you left. And I went, I made it to about 85%. Uh -huh. And so the nose came up. So that meant you had to hit the brake pretty hard. And I stalled the engine and the rotation stuff started turning sideways, which didn't feel like much. But four seconds into that happening, now oh it's like God. really feeling sideways. And That's the wheels, a long time. Yeah, the wheels go straight to the ramp. Yeah. Like the tires just move out of the way and the wheels go. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but so, but you can control it a little bit. It's not as much as a dirt bike, though. That's crazy. How far was that jump you did? I forgot. You, it you, was three thirty-two. Three thirty-two. Yeah. It was, Fuck. <laughs> it was a. Uh, it was a good stunt. We we broke the world record at the time was three oh one, and it was good to do like a proper ramp to ramp. You know, kind of a. It was a full on deal. Hot Wheels was so awesome. And aside from rim wow. hitting ground, the, it was a safe landing. Yeah, I mean I. It spun wow. out, and you know the logo centered right on the camera. <laughs> it was. Uh, <laughs> How, where, and you did the loop. The loop was a little scarier, actually. Like an actual Hot Wheels loop, but life size. Yeah. And how fast do you have to go for that? Fifty-two and a half. Exactly. Sixty sixty-six feet, so six stories up. It was fifty-two and a half miles an hour. Some little engineer worked that out, and nobody believed him. And Look at that. That's real. That's a real car and a real loop. Yeah, I was Greg Tracy in the green <laughs> car, and I was in the <laughs> yellow. You that, are nuts. That seems safe. What happens if you go 55? I it, So it's 6.8 Gs when you hit the ramp at 52 and a half. Wow. 55 would have broken the car. You would have lost enough speed that you wouldn't have been going fast enough at the top. It would, no it would have collapsed the front end at 55? It, bo it bottomed out even at 52 a little bit. Did it really? Yeah. I mean, think, yeah, you, you think like, oh, if you just go fast enough, it's safe. It's like, yeah, but the force being pushed up on the suspension is so violent. Six wow. point zero to six point eight G's was instant. Do you basically black out for half a second, or does it? Not? Um, we went up in planes and and um, pulled seven G's in these little extra uh, aerobatic planes and tried to work up the gut, uh, the technique really of uh -huh. how to keep blood in your head. Um, but it what, uh, yeah, what that's happens a, there? Is that a failed attempt at it, or the car a falls into a, a net? Car. <clears throat> that was a test of a net that was designed to catch us in practice if it didn't w work out uh-huh and the net ended up you see how the springs are like, Looks like the net broke. <laughs> it it bounced and then the the all the attachments just unhooked themselves oh, oh. they weren't closed right oh they were just Jeez. hanging like yeah. over the top yeah. oh, the fucking it was built like a hot wheel set too how about that shit? <laughs> that's a little oversight <laughs> wow that's shady and so okay if you and if you don't go 52 and a half you just fall through you just don't make it up and just fall on your head right because you won't yeah. you won't have a g at the top yeah and there were a couple times where at the top it floated a little bit, get a little wheel spin. And then so the math is 1G at the top. Yeah, you want it to be stuck to the top. But not 1.5G is the top, 1G at the top. Uh, 1.5 would be fine, but it would probably break. <laughs> probably break the car. Yeah, yeah. even wow, a half G is geez, fine. Man. It's just, we, and we sent a full-size remote control car through there first. Uh -huh. um, That's pretty cool. Once they said 52 and a half, we are like, bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I you was thought thinking, it would be way faster, I was right? Eighty, yeah. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, no way. That's what I, my first thought was. Higher, yeah. Yeah. Where so, does that rank on? You know, because you've done a lot of stunts, a lot of movies, a lot of different racing, things like this or the jump. Where do those land on your scale of gnarliness? The jump was a bigger stunt from a perception i think just because it was such a massive leap you know mm -hmm. but we had but with the jump you can start small and build it up so you can change the arrow of the truck uh -huh. you can change all that stuff with this there's no like small beginning you just have to do it so that's why i think this was more dangerous and this was more dangerous than a movie because some movies like tokyo drift when you know that scene when they're going down the the they have the cliff edge yeah that wasn't a real cliff. It was the backside of the Azusa Dam. And um, so it was a slope, but you weren't going to walk away. Yeah, yeah. And the safety gear was a kind of a joke. Anyway, you had your own safety gear, but like the green belts and stuff like that weren't really <laughs> attached to anything. So you just sort of had what you brought. 
and and well, you brought what? that's not <laughs> that's well that's really, how stunts that's really how stunts burying are burying the lead really yeah stunts are you bring every every stunt guy has his own belts and, and his own belts yep you, so what do you do you get there and have and you put them in the car yourself yeah there's eye bolts in the cars and you put them in yourself really yeah that's so like, like a thing oh yeah Oh, yeah, like that Camaro I bought from the movie. Yeah. I, you know, my own little lap belt. So if I had a passenger, you had to clip those lap belts in there. And, wow. You know, and that's, wow. there's no, you're learning all kinds of tidbits today I didn't know yeah. about. Is that for their liability, but also you want to know that these were installed correctly and you, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to hear like a PA of installed your shoulder harness? It's probably more the latter. Okay. Yeah. Cause it's Packing like. Packing your own shoot. Yeah. And it's, yeah. and it's, you know, these stunt guys remember the real stunt guys that are, that do this that do everything they jump off buildings light themselves on fire they're martial artists you're going to skydive and jump into another airplane sure i'll do that you're going to submarine or whatever you know they're one-stop shop guys they bring a massive amount of gear that they've been training with that's part of what they bring to the show so you know belts for the cars that's one of those things but that's a that's a good tidbit that's awesome, man. Thanks for coming in. That's really a good, cool. good, strong show we just did there. Live people, thank you for joining us. Thank you for participating in the Super Chat. Uh, Tanner, is it just Tanner Faust on Instagram? It is, right? It's it just is. written out. Tanner Faust. Yep. Yep. If you want to plug anything else, now's the time. Rockstar, wow. Volkswagen. Yeah, well, that's uh, anywhere with Odyssey Bradery's uh, Rockstar, Volkswagen, Forts, and Motorsport. So you got it all I think my on. gamer tag is Sweet T Faust 34 on Forts. Is it left over from high school? Uh, it's just you know you got a, you, it's what you get given. Sorry, Tanner Faust is not available. Which, <laughs> which you like? <laughs> Sweet tea. You're like God damn it. Sweet tea Faust. <laughs> you encounter people it's in the virtual world. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, not it's really good, Tanner Faust. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Uh, yeah, thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. We'll do our. You. Well, if you're uh, if you're watching live, come back later, 4 p.m. Pacific. We got Steve Dining coming in the show. If you're not watching live, see you next week. Peace the fuck out, homies. Goodbye.